We'll call this meeting to order at <coughs> 702. All right. Um, first item of agenda on the agenda is public comment. Is there any comment in the room? Uh, is there any public on Zoom? Hannah from Word of Ed is on Zoom. That's it. Is there any comment, Hannah? Uh, okay. All right. Next item is the acceptance of minutes of the January 16 meeting. Is there a motion? I make a motion to accept the minutes from the January 16th meeting. For a second. I'll second. Any discussion? All right. I'll take it. Say aye. 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 All right. That carries. Are there any additions to the agenda? Okay. All right. Uh, communication correspondence. Um, let's see. A couple things I want to report. Uh, I did receive a letter from Nicole uh, just uh, talking about the um, upcoming um, annual report. So just for a reminder, I'll be in touch with um, her or Kelly about getting that done. Um, also, Let's see, I got some communication from the Board of Ed on, a, on an old business I am about to return of funds on the high school project. And a couple of emails back and forth with the assessor that led to the, just prior to the grant list being uh, shared. Did anybody else have communication or correspondence that they had? Okay. Old business. Um, let's see, we do respond to the non-educational cost. Um, it just, I have it on here as deferred to the next meeting. I had some other correspondence with the superintendent's office with that, uh, due to the timing of this meeting relative to board of ed meetings. We'll cover that at our next, uh, BOF meeting. Um, appointment to fill the board of finance alternate. So, um, I did receive, um, from Mike. Uh, a nomination for Jeff Hecht, who's here, to serve as the uh, Democrat alternate. Um, so I guess I have a motion to uh, accept uh, Jeff as the alternate. Is that one? I'll make a motion. Do you, uh, you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, <laughs> my name is Jeff Hecht. I've lived in town for eight years. Um, been pretty involved with the community. A lot of people know me, Bob. Um, I have three kids all coming up through the schools right now, um, and I, you know, I just want to support the the vision of keeping a small town small and uh, making sure that we are sustainable as a community. Thanks, Jeff. I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Jeff as alternate Democratic alternate. I guess it would be for the okay. East Family Board of Finance. For a second. Second. All right. There any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Extensions? Okay. Um, you ready? We'll do the oath now, yeah. and then you'll and then you'll be a member. <laughs> okay. Uh, raise your right hand. You do solemnly swear that you will perform all the duties and meet all the responsibilities of as a member of the East Granby Board of Finance for the town of East Granby in a manner that will benefit the welfare of the town of East Granby and its citizens, uphold and enforce the Connecticut General Statutes, the East Granby Code of Ordinances, and maintain a strict code of personal ethics, avoiding any situation that approaches a conflict of, in, of interest or violation of any law. So help you God. I do. You're a, you're a member of the Board of Finance. Awesome. Welcome Thanks, board. welcome. All right. Um, the next item is, um, Policy committee. Um, just I wanted to I put on here to make sure that I talked about it. I know when we had the auditor's report um, last meeting, they talked about a purchasing policy, which I think is the policy that got us going with policies last year. We ended up passing a bunch, but we never passed that one. So um, I mean, we're hitting the busy season in terms of budget, but shortly thereafter, I think I want to get a policy committee together and 
so we can work that offline, bring it back here, and work with the selectmen. Uh, I think that committee will also do, I think we, we suggested in our um, set of policies last year that we review our policies, I think, annually. Um, so we'll have that review done as well. All right. Uh, the other old business item was for um, the Board of Ed to just uh, give us an update on the Mill High project closeout. Um, we have the materials that I passed along. So you want to give us a brief summary, Missy? Sure. So this is for the um, middle school, high school roof project. And we finally received the draft audit. It was read um, at the school town building committee and approved by them. So I did sign off on it and submit it to uh, DAS, Department of Administrative Services, who oversees uh, school construction. Essentially, the bottom line, the good line, is we had a reimbursement rate of 40.71% due to our open choice seats. Those are the children that we have from Hartford. We ended up um, an adjusted percentage amount of 48.73 because um, school projects give what they call bonus seats if you participate in the open choice program. So all in all, The estimated balance due to the LEA, which is the town of East Gravy, is $332,672.99. It's a little bit higher than we were expecting back from kind of what our math was when we were doing our final um, mm -hmm. kind of in-house audits and, and calculations. So, so the town should be receiving that. Any questions for Ms. Yeah. I would just add one little comment. There, there was a discrepancy on the audit where they were reducing it by a small amount because of the disagreement between the unqualified costs. Yeah. And uh, the, 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 I'm on the committee and we discussed that. I think it was like $12,000 or something like that. It was a small amount of money compared to the total. And the advice from our, our consultant was just don't touch it because if, they, if you challenge that, they can go back and go through the whole uh, list of qualifications and sometimes they can find other things. So it's kind of like he, he thought it was a very good mm -hmm. uh, amount of money to get. So That's great. We went with it. Awesome. Just, I have a clarifying question. Um, did you, did I understand correctly? We would have been at 40.71, but we went up to a 48.73 reimbursement rate due to the, the usage of choice. Correct. That's great. Okay. All right, and uh, thanks to Mike and the rest of the, the team that was on that committee. I know it's a, an extra lift for everybody to carry. Some. It's nice to see money coming in rather than bills. It is. All right, thank you. Sure. And Kelly, um, if I could put you on the spot for a moment, we did trade an email in between meetings. The funds, when they do come back, will go to the roof and roads fund. Correct. Correct. Not to the not to the general. No, nope. they go back into the roofs and roads, and then it would be up to, I'm not sure if it would be the Board of Selectmen or the Building Committee, but those funds still can be used for what the bond was approved as long as they don't exceed what was approved at town meeting. So once, if they're not used or if they are and there's a little left or something, and then the, the fund is closed officially, then anything remaining would go back. But those funds are still available for roads or I think roofs are all them, but it would be roads if, um, okay. if anything. There's nothing like leeway wise that we could use it for for ca outstanding capital items that we have on our capital planning, sir. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that would have been too good to nice try out. <laughs> so you could close out the fund with a bit more to return it to the general fund and then move it, correct? I mean, you don't have to I think use that's it. That's a board of select women, a board of finance vote, oh, right? Yeah, so and I, I mean, I would think that. So the intent originally of the motion when it went right. to the town. You're estimating. You're saying we assume this much is going to be a reimbursement, and as you know, like that fluctuates. So, kind of the estimate of what you wanted to go out to bond for, based on the reimbursement. So it's not like a real solid number. So I think mm -hmm. being conservative, 
they always leave money in mm -hmm. to see what's the actual reimbursement going to be. And, you know, so that would definitely be a decision that, uh, I mean, it's been approved by the town to be used for roads and roofs. Um, mm -hmm. so, I'm just thinking from a budgeting standpoint, you could offset it somewhere else. If it went into the road fund, you could offset the road fund. Offset, you know, so there's ways to move it around. Yeah. It would probably be maybe a town meeting vote to move it back or if you wanted to close it. Yeah. Um, I think that's, I think that would just be that you say it's done and, yeah. and then we shut it down and then we just notify the board of it because it's already been approved by the yeah. town. So it could be used, um, it could be used for roads without any other approval because that's already been approved yeah. for roads. Okay, so they are. It's a good thing, though. Yeah, it's a good thing. So you have the money, because there weren't a road need, it could be closed out, it could go to the general fund. I know they're paving some big roads yeah. next this yeah. year. All right. Do you, um, to the Board of Selectmen, do you have in your near future a plan to address what might happen with that money? Do we know, is there a date? Do we know when it's going to show up? We don't. They were very strict when I had to have it back. And I had to ask for an extension. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice but idea. no, I don't. Okay. You should do what I do sometimes. Call them up and tell them it's going to be a penalty. Okay. If you don't get it back by a certain date. Does it work? <laughs> no. Never work. I mean, so we have an unknown uh, data receipt, and then it would be good to have a plan for what it's going to be used for, or whether it makes sense to use it for or not. And my recommendation for whatever it's worth would be not to spend it until we actually get the check in hand yes. from the state. So <laughs> <laughs> have a plan for it. <laughs> okay, great. Anything else yeah, on the um, middle high closeout? Just, but if we were to move it back to the general fund, it would give us more flexibility. Is there an advantage just keeping it in roofs and roads? Certainly, if it's in the general fund, it, um, especially going into the budgeting cycle, it gives us room, right, to use that to maybe offset what would be a tax increase. Or, um, would it give us the opportunity to move that to the capital fund without costing us an arm and a leg? So, I mean, there's places it can go. Um, It'd give you more flexibility but, if you did that, too. Right, and but it's a matter of priority. In that you're also in a bond, so you're paying interest on yeah. that money. So just pay it back. you could also, you know, yeah, you could also but that certainly, yeah. yeah. So you're using money that you're paying interest on to just put into the general fund. And yeah, it makes sense. Sorry. No, 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 that's good. No. <laughs> I'm just thinking, what's the interest rate on that bond? <laughs> I think it's like one for pretty good. Yeah, yeah it was, it was like got right it. before we got in there, right, right before. It'd be better off almost putting it in the bank and just getting the interest. The, you know, the net interest rate was, but um. so I think what I'll do is I'll put it on the margin either. and just maybe we'll know more on it's going to come, and maybe there'll be some idea. Like, you know, even if it's two seconds, we say we don't, we don't know yet, and we'll just move on. But I'll, I'll keep it as a topic when it makes sense in our meeting. Thanks. All right, uh, on to new business, Ben. So review the 23 grand list data. All right, welcome to Reval. Um, you got a bunch of stuff um, for this. Let's see. Uh, this is the, uh, you got the grand list, you got a thing of history, and then separately I um, sent out a uh, report that the assessor gave us. Okay. Um, so first of all, the grand list that came out. Um, so as you know, revaluation happened. The grand list went up by. Can you keep me honest here? I have 29.3 percent. Um, residential went up by 30, almost 36 percent, 35 and change. Commercial by 53 and change. Industrial went down by seven and change. Public utility up by 6.56. And use assessment went up by 24%. Um, what that means on average for real estate, um, 
uh, that number, there's a, there's actually a further split out. Real estate is 30.5%. Uh, so on average, if we left the mill rate alone, and if every house was impacted uh, with their valuation the same, that everybody's tax would go up 30.5%. That would likely be all of our last <laughs> action on the Board of Finance. Um, so uh, within that, Houses have gone up different amounts. So, I mean, the, the kind of good news for property owners in East Granby, if you own a house, the value of your house went up. Um, and if you were unaware of that following the market or anything, now you know and you got your assessment and that's higher. Um, and so what we need to do is be aware of that and we need to, um, we need to be able to reduce that. Uh, in my view, reduce the mill rate significantly um, so that people aren't slammed by taxes. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Can you just use a 30% reference number for yeah. houses? Yeah. An average? That's what you said. Yeah. yeah. Yet the sample we got is all substantially lower than that. That's because the yeah, it's calculated using what, the mill rate is 32, right? 32. Yeah, I'll walk you through that sample. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That sample had a lower rate in it, and I. Yeah, I, it's important about to read the yeah. I think this we printed the one with the when um, Donna made it so that you could oh, change the, old the mill rate yeah. and then see what the taxes would be. Yeah. Okay. So you might have printed it on one of those yeah. rates. Yeah. So the version you have, I think I sent an Excel version. Yeah. So you can go in and change at the bottom. There's a mill rate in there of 32. Yeah, that you was very cool. Wanted. You can like play around with the mill yeah. rate and see what would happen. Yeah. So put it in at the current mill rate. Mm -hmm. So um, for those that didn't get it, it it's a list of sample properties. I, I had asked the assessor, think of some neighborhoods, you know, where there's a lot of people. So there's a, you know, a house in Winding Hills. There's a house in the Ridge. There's a house. Um, somewhere on Spoonville Road, you know, I don't know which house they are, but it gives you a sense of, hey, this house, their taxes, their, their assessment went up 40%. These guys went up 25, this one went up. So you can see there's a range of impacts to um, individuals. Um, and then in that spreadsheet, it also calculates a new tax for that person based on a different mill rate. So you can see a real life example. Um, so, you know, we have, in addition to a regular budget year, we have another moving factor in terms of trying to um, limit the impact of the valuation on people's taxes. Because, you know, just because your house went up in value doesn't give you more cash in your pocket to pay taxes, right? It's, it's nice when you sell it. Uh, but that, so that's what the... At least for now, that's that's what, what we've seen. And I'll just throw it out for the question questions about the data that I shared. I will say this tool was a tremendous help. I think it's important that we're kind of on the same page as far as what the impact's going to be from the reval before we start talking about where the different mill rates could potentially end up with different um, potential um, Increases, various increases. So this was fantastic. So I, you know, ask as we go through the next several meetings, keep this information close. That you know, get familiar with it. Certainly, um, we, you know, if you have questions about it, you can reach me one on one, or we can talk about them in this meeting. I just want to make sure everybody understands what we got here. I just have a quick question. Yeah. So after looking at that, so you're showing um, in the grand list history. Yeah. So for real estate, it's showing a percent change of the 20, 23, 2022 change is 29.37% mm -hmm. um, with an increase uh, over five years was 32. The, yes. the, that sample set? Yeah. Is the tax percentage, is that their increase percent? That's the grand list change. So it's, it doesn't, it doesn't it really relate. This one. Yeah, so yeah. you look at the residential uh, tax. Like I just was looking at the percentages from the grand list and then the tax comparison. And I just noticed the percentages were smaller, like 
if it was an average over a 29% increase overall, I just was looking, does that compare to that sample set? Or is the same? Sure, yeah, so that was a question. I, so this, what, she, what he did, he's using that, and you can punch it in the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he set it at 32. Currently, okay. we're at 36. So if this was at, thir what, I, what is it, 35.9? 36.3. 36. Okay. So if that was set at 36, at what our current rate is, those would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 30, 40 percent. Those are the tax percentage. Okay. Right. Okay. If you uh, change. So he was. Yeah. this is just yeah. a tool to see what it would look like. Okay. All right. Average. I just, because I was wondering if the, the sample set was on skewed on one side or the other because the increase That's what's called my eyes. We're, <laughs> we're, we're smaller. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, good question. Any other questions about that material? All right, I want to spend a minute on the financial model. Um, a couple of assumptions that went into that, and again, this is, um, that model is for you to do your individual modeling. You don't have to go with, um, what I put in there, but I do want to explain what's in there so that you can um, be confident in how you modify. First thing that we did in there is left the motor vehicle tax rate as it was, which is um, 32.46. Um, we didn't, um, that that's the state maximum. So we can't go any higher than that. Uh, there's nothing in the budget to increase it in this um, coming fiscal year. Um, and because motor vehicle um, values went down, I, as a go-in, I didn't think we ought to bring the motor vehicle mill rate down and uh, discussion about that. So th that's in there as constant. Um, the new grant list is in there. Um, the um, the mill rate that I put in there is 31. I, you know, that's um, one person's view of a place to land with a mill rate that, um, and you can put that in the, um, the other spreadsheet if you want and see what happens to those sample houses. Um, and again, that's just, you know, starting point. It's nothing more than that. Um, I, on revenues, um, the other thing I did is because you know our the property tax with the motor vehicle property tax rate, the state will reimburse you in the following year if your uh, real estate tax is higher than the motor vehicle. They're, they're reimbursing the difference, and so far they've done that. But taking that out in the out years because it doesn't project until the fifth year, I think that we go over that. So I have that modified appropriately. Um, double checked our borrowing. You know, we have the actual amortization schedule in there for expenditures. Um, we, um, what's in here at the moment is kept the capital um, uh, fund um, um, funding you know, up. Last, this current year we put in 700,000, which was a 100,000 increase. Over the prior, we had projected to go up to 50,000 in the coming fiscal year, and I kept that in there. Uh, it's open for discussion. I kept, um, I put for general government, I put 3%. For the Board of Ed, I put 4%. These, again, all of this preliminary numbers that we're going to talk through and refine over the coming meetings. Um, and then I think that's all that I want to point out. All those together kept a um, general fund balance around just about 11% in the coming year and then just under 10 in the two years after that. It goes above 10, it goes to 13 and change and then 18 in the out years, but those are so far away. Um, uh, the other thing to point out, um, I kept a 2% grand list um, increase year over year. So this year is big and then back to 2% a year. That's been the last few years, that's actually been very high. But, um, and um, I also, I did bump the mill rate change to 3% in the 25, 26 year, but I left it at 2%. Again, that's just been some stock numbers that we've had in there. but. Um, I couldn't get close to 10 in that 10% general fund balance without 
doing something, so I bump the mill rate down here. Um, so also, that's what's historically used 2% because it's been the average, right? Yeah, it's been an average, yeah. So what you can do, I know we have a couple new people. I mean, what you can do with this model is um, it's explained on the instruction page. Um, and I'll just ask you to disregard it. There's some slide data and publication data tabs that, that get populated at the end, but it's usually something that I have to do manually in there. Um, so you can play with, um, according to the instructions, you can put your own percentages in there for um, general government or board bed or mill rate. Um, just look at the instructions and see which tab to do those on. It's pretty, uh, generally speaking, you don't do anything on the summary cash flow page. You, hit, you want to mess with revenues, do it on that page, and expenditures, do it on that page. Um, so um, any thing anybody wants to say or ask about the model? Can I ask one question about, um, so I noticed that we have a collection rate of 98%. Is that historically what we've had? Or is that just something that the state has? Are we above average in terms of mill rate collections? Um, I believe that we've been a little above that most years. Yeah, we're at. I think we're above 99 in the past year. Okay. Um, my second question is with this grant list going up, there's gonna be people who are gonna have significantly higher tax bills than others because some people were hit disproportionately more with uh, evaluations. Right. Do we need to reevaluate and maybe use a different number as, as a group because we should be relatively consistent with our yeah. forecasting assumptions? That's a great question. I think I can maybe reach to the tax collector and see what, what happened last revaluation. But if, I mean, if we're over 99%, yeah. my assumption is 98 is still highly conservative I think it's as well. So. I don't, we've never gone below 98. Yeah, okay. I've been 15 years, I never, that okay. I remember. It, it is, that was some pretty tough times in yeah. too. Yeah, it is a conservative number, but to your point, like this isn't just a normal reevaluation, right? Like we've not seen a historic increase in values in a five year period like this. This is almost uncharted territory. Right. Respect. If everything go, go, went up the same, then we kind of see it level and property and the taxes would remain relatively yeah. consistent. But I know that some neighbors saw like a 40% increase, others saw 20%. So yeah. some people might be paying $1,000 more, whereas others are peop other people might be paying the same or less than yeah. what they just yeah, but I don't know if you had received this material in yeah. advance or not, but like this model is a great, great tool for us yeah, because it shows the variability you're talking about. Um, and I just want to, to confirm that we're on the same page. So the 32 that was used in this example, that still gives us a average of a 17% tax increase for people. So if we were to go with what you have as a model now with 31 as a mill rate for real estate, that's still a 13.67% tax increase on average, right? I'm going to agree with you. Okay. I think it's, it's probably worth the plugging in. So if that is correct, just to kind of say this is kind of our starting spot because this is what we have, a 3% increase in general government and a 4% increase in the Board of Ed would give your average person a tax increase of 13.67%. Which I think is high very high. I know there was a lot of outrage about a 6% increase last time. You know, that was mm -hmm. the highest tax increase we had in a quarter of a century. And now we're talking about more than double on that. I just don't think that's sustainable. It's my two cents. Okay. Because ultimately, at, at the end of the day, this is going to go to a public vote, right? We have to put something forward that the public is going to agree to. And I don't know the vast majority of people would agree to an increase that high. Yeah, good point. I'm, just, I'm doing, actually doing the math here. Yeah. I, I imagine this is going to be a bit of a working session as we go. So I have a question for you. If 
just as an example, it, you dropped it from 36.3 to 31. Does that take effect before the, um, if we voted on it, right? And then it goes, does, does that take effect before um, you're hit with the tax bill at the end of the year? It would be the July 1st. It would be the July. Tax bill. So it would be, you'd hit it, you'd, you'd realize that before you actually had to pay on it. Right, because they did the increase, and now um, it, the mill rate's at 36.3. But if we're like, okay, let's lower it, you wouldn't have to pay the 36.3, you'd pay the 31. I think right. the, yeah, so it, yeah. the, the one time but you're paying on the decrease. You're paying on a higher value. The right? value will go up if the mill rate goes down. Yeah, so correct. Right. Yeah, both of them are going to happen simultaneously. But just for sake of conversation, I was just doing some simple math with the total property tax collected based on the mill rate stated at 31, and it went up 5%. So I'm not sure how these samples work, you know, how that, how that formula is working out. So I, what I think is the big driver of the difference here is the real estate um, personal property has is now a disproportionate amount of the overall tax base. So I, so for example, I think real estate used to account for fifty eight percent of all the taxes in town. So because the real estate value has now gone up proportionately more than the other, the other real estate increased. It's, it's now I want to say. 67%, it's significantly more off the tax base. So even if we were to just lower the mill rate to offset, yeah. you're still responsible as a homeowner for a larger percentage of the overall tax. And that's what's driving most of this right. tax increase. The net number, I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I gotta look at this a little. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of moving yeah. This is a lot of ways to split it. Yeah. 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 But I mean, just from a, just from a macro standpoint, the 5%, that would probably be your right. It's probably be six or seven percent if you did it that way. Yeah, I, I, that's I think a huge just, number. I mean, just for um, your your back of the napkin math is pretty good. At thirty one mil, these uh, however many properties we had here, sixteen properties average out to a fourteen percent tax increase. At twenty nine mil, it goes down to six, so it goes down by four each each. Mil. So just to have that in the back of your head. Psychologically, having something below 30 is a big thing for them, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Well, for frame of reference... Do you have some no rates? Yeah, I think it's I do. How'd you know? <laughs> so, Granby just went to 31.89. They did reval last year. You know, I'm giving you their current rates, okay? Most of these the lower ones have been gone through reval previous year. So it's going to already reflect what we're trying to accomplish. So Simsbury in, in, uh, is 31.82, Grammy's 31.89, Suffield's 28.61. Historically, they've always been lower because they're in the prison. They get a substantial amount of money. Plus, they have a lot of big houses. Uh, Windsor's at 33.6 with all the development. <laughs> you know, that always cracks me up, you know. Um, Windsor Locks is 26.33. They're always historically the lowest. That's actually kind of high for them. Uh, they get all the airport funding. Um, and I just I jumped around a little bit. You could go, you have one that was interested in there. What was Bolton? I have Bolton at 43.82. It must be re revalued this year because we were yeah, at 36. I, yeah, I, I, I actually wanted to look more because I feel funny. Yeah, Bart Hampstead. <laughs> was 33.94 and Bloomfield is 36.78 plus their fire tax. So that just gives you a, a flavor. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Anyway, yeah. I, I think most people, you're, you're gonna want the balance between the services that the town can provide and what we're paying for, right? But ultimately I think as far as the mill rate is concerned, people only really care as far as its impact of the pay right. tax, right? So that to me has kind of been the, the driving number in trying to figure out. Like it's helpful to have a frame of reference, but. The only reason I bring that up, because it does directly affect our property values, in that when people are shopping for a house, that is one of the things they'll consider. 
it's, it's got to be a very desirable town like West Hartford to have a really high mill rate and still get premium for your... With the interest rates up, the mill rate can affect that monthly payment for those people, you know? So I always... That's, there's two things that people are looking at when they're zooming through Zillow. There's a, the ratings for the schools, right? That's probably number one. And then Realtors the second, hates Zillow. But what's that? Realtors hates Zillow, but... What's Just that? Put that out there. So, Realtors Zillow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Realtor.com. It's a bunch of lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, when it, it's just as a frame of reference, that's what people are looking at. I'm, you know, and uh, the school ratings and the mill rate. Isn't that two of the things that you're going to consider? Anyway, okay. that's just food for thought. And just, um, I'm just going to repeat some con not repeat, I'm going to state some context again because I know it's new folks. So tonight, the, the thing we're going to do is provide, in, in a few minutes, provide some operating budget guidance to the Board of Ed and Board of Selectmen. They're going to come back in March and say, you know, here's what you asked us to do, here's, here's what it is, you know, and we'll get a sense of, from that whether that's leaving things on the table that, or leaving things on the floor that they need or um, there's plenty of money or whatever, but they'll come back and tell us um, how that fares. Then the next meeting, which is only a couple weeks after that, so our next meeting is March 19th, we'll hear what I just said. On um, April 3rd is our next meeting after that, where we will uh, provide them the board's direction for the public hearing. So we're giving them something tonight. They come back and say, here's what this something is. We have a couple of weeks to um, consider that. Maybe there's follow-up questions we need answered. Maybe we need a meeting in the middle. I don't know. That all depends on what happens next time. And then we say, look, this is what we want you to go to the public hearing with. And then um, from there, we'll have a public hearing later in April. You know, we'll listen to the feedback from the public and then we'll provide um, information to give to the town meeting, which would be the beginning. So that's kind of the rundown of events, and um, I'll forward. It's a, I'll forward to the to the new folks our yearly activity calendar. Did not think to get that earlier. So, um, you know, I also I, I should point out. I think in prior years, the um, the direction that comes out of this meeting has typically been viewed as a floor, like under which well. They told us to come back the first time with X and Y. They'll never go under that. So I, I'm not sure. You know, I think I'm going to put a, a an asterisk on that because I, you know, we have so many moving parts. I think we're going to try and give you one that we would never go under. But the fact is, there's a lot here, and there's a lot of public feedback to get. So uh, I just, you know, I, I just, I just want to say that up front so in case we find ourselves there. I was actually surprised when we had our meeting at the high school last time we did the 6%. Yeah. You know, I, one of my fears was that we were going to get feedback that said, this is too high, we need to make a change. And at that point, we would have been forced to come up with an arbitrary number that lowers it mm -hmm. without knowing what the impact would be, right? Like I got nothing but the utmost faith in Missy and the Board of Ed to say, all right, it was six and now it's five to do the best of that number. But I don't think it's a good way for us to govern if we don't know exactly what the consequences of that are. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go the opposite route and say you start at you know two percent, the board of that says this is one of the consequences of this. We can and we hear feedback from the public that says we're not comfortable with that. We can then add something in, and it's very easy to just do the math and say, all right, we're now at a number. We know what this new number is, and we feel comfortable with knowing exactly what we've changed. That's another reason that I always advocate for starting at a lower number, personally. Yeah, good point. All right. Um, have, have we ever done, um, have we ever asked them to say, what would you like your budget to be within reason? And hear what it is. I always they, try to get them to do that, and they never want. Right. You know, would, like, if like, we gave you, you more money, what would you like? To, what would you like to do? <laughs> like, okay, board of Ed, Missy, what would you like to do this year? Yeah, right. I mean, because I I hear exactly what you're saying, but it, I think it's like you could have an arbitrary number on either end of that. Like, oh well, it's too much, or it's it's too little, um, and. 
you know, we just talked about how what is one thing that somebody comes to this town for is the school. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Suffield, you look at, you know, Simsbury, they have extremely nice schools. I would love to see our school start to do some updates to its fields, a track, I don't know, like, mm -hmm. you know, kind of build through some of that. And if we just keep telling them, hey, you got to make your budget lower, mm -hmm. right? I think you have to strike the right balance between mm -hmm. the two to make sure that the the town is, you know, is, is still attractable to young families with kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. And I think that's what's nice about this board is I think we've got different representation on how different people feel throughout the town, right? Yeah. So the, the important thing for us is we need to put forward a budget that the town will approve a town vote, right? Yeah. So we're going to have, to your point, some sort of compromise. There may be folks that want to do more spending, more involvement and investment in the school. And there may be others who are like, I can't financially afford that from yeah. a tax perspective. So. In my mind, our goal is always to have a budget that will get passed by the town, right? Because if it doesn't, then we're going to come back and we're going to tweak it. And from a process standpoint, like I said, I just think it's easier to add in a $50,000 item and then just crunch the numbers versus if all of a sudden we get a lot of feedback at the high school when we present this, oh, it's too high, you're not going to be able to just easily carve one thing out. You're going to have to come up with a new number and not necessarily know what the impact's gonna be before it's done gone to a vote. So that's where my where I'm not as comfortable with taking that approach, if that makes sense. There's there's the other concern though too. Sometimes when you put out a number, people get that number stuck in their head regardless. So if it's an unobtainable too low or too high, they're gonna hear that first number and that's what they're gonna stick with. So for those people who want the lowest tax as possible, if you lay out a number and say we can make it, you know, 3% is the bare minimum. They're going to hear 3% and that's all they're going to focus on. And if we do 4%, they're going to be frustrated because they didn't, their voice wasn't heard. So I think both ways there's consequence. Yep. yep. We're going to have to compromise, right? Yep. And, and I think we've got a, a good group here of a variety of different opinions to get us to the right place. So the rest of the town, so. And I, I invite, and I, I think that boards would do this, is um, tell us, you know, if we come back with a, with a bad number, tell us, tell us what a good number is. And to, um, tell us, even with whatever number you came back with, what you left on the editing room floor. I mean, tell the public, and tell us. I think that's, that's valid. We should, we should see that. So knowing we have to provide direction, yeah. do we want to get into more of the specifics? Well, yeah, we're, yeah, I was just about, where are we on the agenda right now? Are we going so straight to guidance right now? I well, think we, well, go ahead. I think we've gone through A, B, and C, seven A, B, and C. So reviewed the grant list, reviewed the model. We're discussing revenue and, well, we actually are starting to discuss revenue and spend scenarios. We provide guidance on the registrar and um, select first selecting one salary, and we provide the operating guidance. Can we okay. switch D and E on the agenda? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Switch D and E. Yeah. Can I think it's, hmm? Yeah, because I, I think it makes sense to talk about since we're just the overall this. general guidance, and then that would be a factor that goes into it. So we're going to go to 7E, which is provide, we're going to go right in top, provide out for any budget guidance. Um, so typically we have a series of motions. Right? Well, I, I think it's, I think it's important to have some discussion. I, I hate putting new folks on the spot, but I, cause I've been there, but I do think it's important to get everyone's Usually what we do is we do a round table, see where yeah. people are at, and yeah. then, we can, then, then you can enter, you know, yeah, just right. kind of give everybody a chance to talk. Yeah. yeah. Before we start to, Missy, I know, sorry, I didn't go to the last meeting, but I know the one before that we had talked about the scenario breakdown. Is, can we get that right now, just so people can get a more educated guess where the Board of Ed is? Because I think that would help immensely for everyone right now. 
As a man, Sorry to put you on this, but I <laughs> yeah, Great. I, I didn't want to jump around, but there's a scenario breakdown that they worked on. It was awesome. And I won't get, I mean, I'll give you Yeah, the board's lucky needs a chance to. Sure. Absolutely. It's upcoming kids. It's okay if you share like every two. Yeah. My yeah. yeah. I take a look at this and yep. thank you. Thank you. Good one. Share it now, share it. Oh, she's running out of paper. Okay. okay. That's what we're working on. Yeah. We'll work on last time at the workshop. Yep. I'm happy to That's speak. Do yeah. you want me to talk a little bit? Mm -hmm. Do you want to speak at it first? Can I ask you a question? Are these prioritized in any manner on this? So, like phase one would be the first cuts you would do. Yes, and, and there's, it, it's always a little risky to say what. Right, it's not exact. Right. Anything could happen. I can. So one of the kind of precipitating factors is, as of right now, I have no retirements. So typically, when people retire, you could either maybe absorb it or you hire right. it lower. So if I have a retirement from now that I'm not aware of, that could shift some things. But right. we went. We looked at the least impact to students and programs, and that's how we phased this uh, document. So in other words, the last thing you would want to do is reduce four certified positions. That's the Well, you'll say. see even in phase one, there's two certified positions and a non-certified position because to reduce the budget by 1.3 million to get under 4%. Oh, I said I didn't read about that. Yeah, okay. The only way we can do that is to look at staff and-, and So that would be with a 0% increase. This is reflected as in a 0% increase? No, this this at the end would reflect a 3.42 if you go all the way down to the bottom of phase oh, five. Okay, yeah, I know I'm sorry. sorry. That's okay. okay. So working our way from the bottom up, do we know how much of our budget increases due to just annual salary merit increases, the fact that minimum wage went up like five and a half percent this year? We do. We factor that all in. So all of these numbers are as actual as we can. So we took all of our um, certified teacher where they are in their lane in their step for next year. So whenever we have an actual number, it's certainly factored in. We did our best for health care. Um, you know, transportation um, increases, fuel increases. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we have that as it's like fa it's factored in. I know it's factored in, but that way we can show our retention is driving this much of that because that's another thing that the, that parents like to see is high retention rates of teachers and staff. So if we're showing we're spending this much because we're we're moving teachers up a tier and we're getting quality candidates versus sure. first year teachers. That'll be actually at our town meeting okay. on February 27th Okay. Um, to approve the contract. Yeah, right? when we do our, our full presentation, we have slides that share um, all that, Jeff, so. Okay. It'll show you the tier changes. They have all different lane changes, and then the oh, okay. years they've been there. So, sorry, I might be going a little too deep right now. Yeah. <laughs> It'll all be. So maybe I missed it, but say. So you said you'd, you'd start at one and move all the way down. When, when, what would make you enact phase one? What would make sure us, I, just so I understand this guidance. right. Yeah. So it's historically um, from 2016, just to give a little context, 2016 to current year, we've averaged a 2.3%, 2.38% increase. And we have given back to the town in that same time frame um, about $780,000. Um, so fiscally, we are very, careful and plan as close as we can to with the um, really core staff we have. So in the past years, as, as I've said before, and I will repeat myself, 
this was forecasted two years ago. Two years ago, I expected us this year to be at a 9% as a rollover, which we're pretty close. We utilize our grants with salaries, which is a perfect way to utilize them, which is fine. But we knew two years ago we wouldn't be able to sustain that because it's not that our grants are running out because this really doesn't have to do with putting um, personnel into our ESSER grants. This is primarily our open choice grants. So each year we can roll over the previous years, but we are in current year. So just to give an example, last year we had 1.3 million in salaries in our grants. We only have available 1.1 million this year. So that's, a, that's an immediate 200,000 that we don't have, let alone year after year we move more people in. So this budget is a direct result of what we forecasted two years ago. So there's absolutely no surprise on our part. I don't think there's a surprise on your part if you know, you've been here. Um, we are not, um, we are not um, declining in our enrollment. We're not growing by leaps and bounds, but we're not declining. So we've been um, you know, pretty static with our enrollment, which means you know, we, we looked across our K-12 to see where we could absorb maybe um, higher class sizes or, or less FTE, so reduce some of our staffing so that we keep programs, um, but you know, save some funds on the other side. So when you're referring to full-time certified positions, are those teachers? That could be teacher or administrator. Either one, yeah. You don't have a whole boatload of administrators, so, so. We don't. Is that also speech yeah. and specialists as well? Correct, that's all considered certified staff. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna be blunt. How can you, how can you cut 11 positions? I can't. <laughs> I mean, how, you're short now? Are we short? Yeah. No. No. We're, so we're you're fully staffed. Everything. Okay. Yeah. So does it, the ten point forty two um, does that represent like a same same services next year as this year? Correct. Yeah, a couple things in the top section like reduce health care, revise bus routes, are those even doable? Like how much control do you have over Right, so we looked at our healthcare line and we said, all right, so it's a little bit of a risk, but we took 150,000 out of our healthcare line uh, for next year. Um, when we started, I think we're at a 15%, the quote has come down a bit, so we're able to adjust that. We're hoping that it comes down even more. Typically that happens. Um, we are kind of where we are right now. Um, we do have our um, agent out there, you know, negotiating right. for us. Sure. So, just, like, I mean, we could we could probably ask a thousand questions, but, but when you say somebody reduce healthcare line, what does that represent? What would you be reducing? It would be the projected increase that we put in the budget to. Let, let me rephrase that. What we put in the budget for the projected increase for healthcare costs. So that's like changing their deductibles? Or nope, nothing would change. We budgeted a little high because that's what the quote was when we first came in. So that was like, like sharpening your pencil. Line. Correct. Okay. We are actually at a 10.7 or 8, our first plus one, meaning rolling just everything over with a plus one. So at the time, we had a 15% quote for our health care. It's come down, we readjusted, and we're able to take 150000 off our health care budget that we had planned for next year. So like revised bus routes, that just means kids are on the bus longer, they have bigger routes? Correct. Yeah. We are, we are reviewing our bus routes to see if we can sustain six routes rather than seven. And still be within our policy of you know time on on buses for children can i suggest excuse me can i suggest we put each of these numbers into the model very briefly and see what we would need to raise the mill rate to in order to have a similar closing balance I think that could be pretty time Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I mean, we could play around. We could, we could just give a general rule by looking at the numbers. Yeah, hundred thousand is because I think yeah. the 
It was seventy-seven million or seven hundred seventy million mil. Uh, with the with the three and the four percent increase and the thirty-one percent mill rate, we said we were at a fourteen percent tax increase. Um, well, well no, that's just on, that's housing just on housing property, property. but yes. yep. uh, vehicle taxes will go down, offsetting a little bit of that. So, right. Yep. Yep. A, a little. It's very slightly. 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 Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because I think it's important to know what the impact of the decision that we make is going to have on your average homeowner here. Well, it's a million four, right? A million three total, if you went right to the 10%. So you'd add that, it's going to be another mil? No. I think it's going to be more than that. It'd be two mils. Well, what is a you got to just do the math. What's a mil? We, um, remember we used to have that little sheet that one mill equals this. <laughs> well, so you gotta just divide there, thirty-one into because there's so many moving parts on this. I don't wanna. Yeah. You're just gonna be able to do it in the macro right now. You know. Yeah. Well, that's why I wanna yeah. make sure we're doing it right. I don't wanna make any mistakes. I understand it's time consuming, but but let's get it right. A lot of money. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um. I'm happy to do that. I, I guess a couple things. There's, there'd be a lot of permutations, right? Like the general government might have four or five, so we have four or five here. Yep. Um, we have information yet to come at future meetings about the impacts. Of, I mean, this is great about these impacts. I don't know that the general government has set up the top impacts tonight, but. Um, and I just have one more comment, if I may. Um, you know, I looked at our capital request for the last three years as well. And we've utilized, um, and we appreciate and thank the town very much for $417,000 in capital funds over the last three years. With a 200,000 that we had in our, our typical October request yeah. that we ended up not requesting because we were able to fund some of our capital projects through non-lapsing grants and in-house. So, you know, again, um, we, we appreciate everything that the town and the Board of Finance supports us. Um, I, I can't say this as a unique year because we we knew we were going to be here. So we're doing our best to keep, um, but we, we did sharpen our pencils, as I said. We have compromised. Um, you know, it is my responsibility to ensure that we have a comprehensive and a, you know, strong educational program. And we appreciate the, the financial discipline the Board of Ed has shown. You know, you return money, um, you've used the um, non-lapsing fund judiciously. Uh, absolutely is noticed. So one mill is seven hundred and seventy-three thousand. Yeah, I, I got I got eight hundred and seventy-five thousand. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do it in the spreadsheet. Let's. What using the spreadsheet? using the uh, <coughs> using the finance calculator? Did it work? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't put it in. I just did some. What did you come up with? Uh, eight hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Because that's you. That's backing out the um, vehicle tax. Okay. I just used the, the the blended one. Okay. I would say it's 776. We got three different numbers. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Let's wait. Let's do it right. Stop talking. Yeah. So if I put, I mean, if I put 10.42, it matters what I put for general government, right? We're, yeah, I think we leave general government at 3% just for the sake of argument if we're talking about Board of Ed now. And if we want to get to a 10% unbalanced. Have the other spreadsheet you. Kind of dividing out there. This one. So if we take the mill rate, but yeah, it was, and yeah. then maybe take the average tax yeah. increase. It will be less kind of a frame of reference. Thirty-two point five, giving us ten percent on the on the button. With ten forty-two and with uh, three with the government. And then Todd's throwing that in the tax document. Oh, I got an average work. Can you guys just speak up so they can hear? Sure. What number do you want to know? I don't know. I don't know. 32.5. 30. We got on TV, it'll be okay, but I don't think. Is there anyone on it? That's 19%. So I don't know. 19%? GCG, thank you. Because I was progress, yeah. On average, 
average, okay. On average. There's not as much variation as I thought there'd be, which is good. Mm -hmm. I see a different one. I see one uh, go down to 7.89. Just break. Sure. I'm violating my own rule by doing it on the wrong page. Just messing everything up. Save a few bucks by turning the heat though. <laughs> <It's pretty warm. laughs> Thirty-one point nine. Thirty-one point nine. For me, the real important number is the impact on the individual hormone. It's like that yeah, right. average percentage. You're never yep. going to nail it, but yeah. and that's what we're doing now. So we're right. taking the hypothetical, seeing what that will give us yeah. the appropriate cash balance and what we would need to back it right. to. Thirty-one point nine is seventeen percent. That's the average. That's the seven point eight nine. You said seven point eight nine. We have thirty-one point nine mil rate. That and that's going for a ten percent general fund balance. Yes. Uh, and that's a seventeen percent. That was close to what you had on module originally, right? It was three and four. So you're saying three and ten is still at seventeen? Uh the model was at fourteen. That fourteen. Oh, the model I, was at I'm sorry, yes. I'm looking at another well, first I'm of all, what was originally in this. Yeah, version. and that was I not related to the model. Yep, yep, you're correct. Okay. We can come. Yeah, come or not? Um I'll do another one if I mean do you want to do I'll, four point seven five? I think four. it's important to have the different yeah. ends, right? Yeah, I mean it's starting to I, it. not, I know it's a little more time consuming, but let's say we do it all. I'm okay with that. Well, sorry, Jeff, I don't sign in. Yeah. You work the model a little bit quicker than I do. This is the other question as we're going through is phase three reducing an additional two certified positions, phase three reducing an additional three or Correct. okay, I wasn't sure if it was increasing yeah. from three to four to five. Correct. Okay. So four point seventy five. 30.9 mil rate gives us 10%. 30 well, it's real close to the number you model, 4%. But yeah, that's 13%. 13% average tax increase. Okay. So the 10.42 is 19, 7.89 is 17%. 4.75 and 13 percent tax increase. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm not speaking loud. I know. I apologize. So just, Nicole is watching live, but she can't hear anything. Okay. So. Yeah. So just not this, but that. And I don't blame you for mumbling those numbers. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's yeah. fine if you're just looking out, man. Yeah, we're just trying to yeah. turn this more into a working session than I think we envisioned, right? But I think it's important that we get the right numbers. So, so just to kind of recap. We had. So what we did here is left the general government at 3% for now. So I think we have to come back with a couple of general government scenarios as well. And we just put order bed at the 10.43. What would the mill rate be that would support a 10% um, general fund balance? 
That's with no other changes, like we could cut capital, for example. We could say we're going to take a hit on what we want to send to capital, but right now we didn't change anything else. So that would be a 32.5 mil rate, which according to that sample list of properties, again, I, there's nothing to tell us that's representative of the whole shoot and match, but it is something that and I think anybody who lives in town could find a neighborhood that's like theirs and at least have a sense. That averages out to 19% tax increase for those 16 properties. Um, uh, so all those same assumptions, we went that you know we skipped one, went down to the 7.89 scenario. Um, no rate of 31.9. That's a 17% average tax increase for those properties. Skipped another one, went down to a 4.75 increase. That would be a 30.9 mil rate and a 13% tax increase. Are we anybody have an, an an opinion whether the math the math that the way we're thinking about the math is wrong? <laughs> we're doing this on the fly. I did it on my phone. So yeah. I can say. I guess considering the scenario that I, I I kind of modeled when I had it in front of me at home over the weekend. Um, I'd like to see it, but before we actually set it, I'd like to see a better breakdown of what you're talking about with the commercial, yeah. residential, personal property. And I know that was in there, mm -hmm. but I just didn't look at it in that. Yeah. that so that's kind of yeah. where I'm at. Anyway. <coughs> was, uh, right. This piece. Yeah. And just kind of, you got, we got to have, there's a lot to hash out here. Yeah. I mean, you're really looking at a dramatic impact on the schools. Yeah. Okay. And that's, for me, untenable. I mean, I just got, but you can't get money, right? So you got to figure out a way. So the 19% tax increase, right? Well, so, that's my point, right? Yeah. And that's, these are stuck between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we can't go give them 10.42%, I think. That's just not, I don't think that's good budgeting at any standpoint, but you get below that and I'm not even sure. I mean, the, the barometer to me is, again, what will the town agree to and vote on, right? So obviously if there's too much of a slash to the school services, a lot of people are gonna come out and vote that down. So but on we, the flip side, if yeah. you raise people's taxes by 17 percent, I don't know if that gets passed either, right? So we're going to have to find something. Well, I mean, the good news is we have several meetings coming up where the public will be here and one of them is public hearings. I mean, we have opportunities to hear the public. Yeah. Um, I think we're going probably a little farther than we typically would at this meeting because of the rebound. Um, so we don't have that public input in front of us. Um, can we hear from the general government? I mean, I, I don't know that it makes sense to do every one of the board of head scenarios. I think we're getting the picture. I'd be willing to work them offline and, and share with everybody because we have several weeks to play. Well, we, we have to provide some instruction to that. Yeah. Right, but that instruction is not binding. It, it doesn't mean that whatever you provided today you're stuck with, like you have to vote the same way, we, you know. No. The board of Ed kind of but, did it. Yeah. But, I, you know, part of the challenge that you pointed out as well is that number yeah. never goes down. Not, I don't think it's ever gone down, at least in the six years that I've been aware. Most of the times it goes up. So I want to be mindful that we're not just throwing out a number. We need to right. So I always looked at it a little differently. I always looked at it like, okay, we're giving this goal, okay? And that, so you set a goal of what, three and four, whatever you end up with. And they come back and they say, this is what it would look like. Yep. And then you can adjust. Yep. Uh, you, gotta, you have a good point. Generally, that goal is set low. But I think in a year like this, when there's so many bouncing balls, I think that you know, just looking at this in 30 seconds, it's hard to imagine going lower than what, what 
Jeff has in the model. So I guess hypothetical scenario. If we were to go with the 6.34 and we had feedback at the high school that said, this is unacceptable, it's too high, right? Just hypothetically. We would then say, all right, we can lower it to 4.75, and we know the consequence of that is to eliminate recertified. You do know, yeah. We do know now. Fair we do have a little bit more yeah. knowledge. And we'll hear from the board of the general government, too, so we'll know what yeah. it looks like for them also. I think it was nice. Thank you for breaking this down again. Yeah, I think it was very good to get in the leg of this meeting instead of giving guidance yeah. blindly. Yep. Right. <laughs> yep. yeah. and, well, that's what we would expect. Tend to elicit yeah. was so you give them a number and then they would do this. So right, right. Should we just short circuit it? Yeah. She gets an A plus on this one. <laughs> well, you know, we say we're still a, a person generated profession. Yeah. So our salaries and benefits make the bulk of our overall um, budget. Mm -hmm. So in order to get what I mean, I could wipe out every supply line, equipment, and we looked at it, we still wouldn't even get close to the you know, the reduction amount, you, you have to go to um, salaries. Mm -hmm. I just have one quick question on this, on, on these uh, staff changes. How much of this was a result of additional hiring due to the extra money that came from the, the federal money? And was any of this anticipated to roll off? Like these were, I remember there was talk about a counselor, or you guys hired another sure. one, school psychologist, was it? Yes. Was that always intended to be permanent? Or were these just expenditures that were, I guess my question is, was any of this expected that, that, that you were question. going to reduce anyway, as sure. I guess? We hired, um, we were very careful in how we used our ESSER funds when it came to salaries for that right. reason. Um, we hired two positions, two positions that we have wanted to hire as part of our, our budget for a number of years. Right. Um, one of the positions would be on phase one to reduce the other one we would keep because um, it's extremely important for us to have that second um, school psychologist and we would look to reduce in another area. Okay. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, Mike, I think you actually brought up a good point at the time where you're like, this provides an opportunity to, to pilot, try stuff, yeah. right? And yeah. see if you like it. The challenge is well, now would like it. <laughs> we like it. We pay for it, right? No, I got you. I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to refresh. Yeah. Um, I guess I'd like to hear from the general government. Just, um, you guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you want to talk? Sure. Um, we compiled our FY25 budget. It's preliminary, mm -hmm. using directional data, and we have some expenses that you know, haven't been locked down yet because we're still waiting for rates and that type of thing. But right now, we're at 8.7% 8 .7 over FY24. And that equates to $475,000 approximately. And the drivers behind that are adding an eighth officer, salary benefits, fully loaded costs, and also bringing the ARPA folks back in full time. Well, so at, the, at the hours they're at now. Right, right, exactly. So no reductions in right. Yeah, so that's all in. Right. So, you know, some were full, some were part, but that's basically taking the ARPA money and bringing the ARPA money back into the budget. Mm -hmm. So, if you, what we did is we took a couple of different cuts of the 8.7%. We said, okay, if we removed ARPA, if we didn't bring the ARPA funds back into the budget, we would be at 6.7% or 365K over. And as far as adding an eighth officer along with no ARPA, we would be at 4.7 or 257K over. Those are our big cost impacts. So it's ARPA and the, the different right. police officers. Okay. Right. And, and just one more thing, Mike. The other one, it's not as big of an impact, but it would be the fire department because what we're doing, what we're going to be doing is bringing the the capital, the maintenance back into the budget. And that's that's reflected in that number. Yeah, I, yeah. Everything's in. 
Everything is in. The only thing is, it back it's in. directional data. It's still early in the process. The numbers aren't locked out completely. But I am comfortable from a directional standpoint, um, you know, as far as having a discussion where we're at right now. So I guess pretty pretty simple. Simple. One, one quick question was, you said without the ARPA, without the eighth officer. So could you uh, speak up, Oliver? Sure. You said without ARPA and without the additional police officer, that was yeah. 4.7? That would have, uh, let's see, 4.7. OK. America best plan. So you would all this grant money else. Sorry. How does that work? Because that was something that we brought on an additional officer to That was to... my request for executive session. <laughs> OK. Okay, just getting back to the ARPA, that's just the staffing that was added with the ARPA funds to provide additional services to the town. Yep. Is there a number of people? How many people was that? Was it mostly part-time, full-time? It was to bring one part-timer to full-time and benefits, and a second to full-time and benefits, and then a part-time, and then um, part-time and benefits. So it That's was included? Yes. So it's an yes. additional. Yes, it is. Yeah. So if you kept them where they were at, do you have that number? Yeah, that's the 8.74. So could that be brought through other means? Because I know at least one and a half, one FTE and a part timer are parks and rec. Could that money be raised through increased parks and rec fees? Is that something we would look Yeah, I mean, we've, I've had conversations with Alicia about it. Okay. Uh -huh. So, right. So it's, it's, um, Two of the employees are with Park and Rec. One part time employee and then one making them a full time employee. And kind of so we get into the weeds a little more on the general government generally, okay, yeah. because, uh, you know, it's our purview. But is when are we anticipating having a, lot, having a line item? Because we're making a lot of, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to speed up the calendar a little bit this year so we know, at least I think we are, you know. Uh, just to get as much information early, because this is a lot to digest, and it's a, there's a lot, even with the ARPA transition, that money's going away, so now we have to say, there's a lot more considerations this year than normal, I would say. Uh, so the more information you can provide earlier, like what those additional line items look like, increase for next year, because you're giving us a macro right now, which is fine. That's all we ask. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, it's okay. So, do, is there a point at which you're going to line item these uh, in the before? We usually get that in like March, I think. Yeah, yeah we can give line items. Can oh yeah. Get, yeah. Oh yeah. Just yeah. to no, give us a little is, more flavor, like. Oh, definitely. Yeah. This we is, can do that tomorrow. That'd be yeah, yeah, this the sooner is, the better. We we've got everything in. Okay. okay. Okay, but the numbers the numbers aren't locked out. You know, we 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 still have some work to do, but again. Are we comfortable that this is good directional data? The answer is yes. Because I trust that. You're, you've yeah, been pretty it's active. I mean, yeah. um, like take for instance, there, there's another observation that we have right now. And, um, I applaud Ed Hubbard, uh, RCC, that's recommending that we, um, we institute a fee for bulky and also building materials as a way to offset our RCC cost. Mm -hmm. That's factored in here. Ed and I sat down today and went through that. So, yes, we have some expenses that we need to figure out in short order, but we also have some good things going on within here, too. Okay. Um, so to clarify, these numbers are inclusive of a fee that you anticipate adding, but it's not. That is correct. Fees. Okay. That is correct. And, you, and the additional road service fees are incorporated? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And we have placeholder, you know, we, as far as, you know, compensation, we put a placeholder out there, um, you know, to make sure that, you know, everything is level loaded year over year or so that the metrics are comparable when you compare 25 versus 24. Thank you. Yeah. You mentioned moving fire department items back from capital back into the operating budget. That is correct. Is that everything got moved back? No, it's no, not in my five-year capital, five capital plan. It's already, we've well, already it's, done It's that. the maintenance stuff, right? Yeah. We had already taken that out. The non-capital capital? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're comfortable with so the right approach? Well, we had talked about it. You don't yeah. want it to be buying right. band-aids with capital. Right? Yeah, no, nope. yeah. yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Just, that's what we moved back. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, kind of happened, right? So for instance, the 40K, you know, for maintenance this year, we've already expensed 38 of the 40K. That's what's going to be coming back into 
Yeah, what's that? Without budget. This is a, a request for tonight. Uh, yeah, this, this fiscal year. Okay. okay. So the stuff that you brought up for capital for tonight, that's been removed for next year's? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. That's yes. the piece I'm missing. Thank you. Yep. Regarding the RCC, is there any risk to that bulk or is that all pass through revenue expense offset? So is there a concern that we might be overstating the revenues that we'll be receiving from those bulk, bulky disclosures? No. Okay. Based it no. on what we No. Well, what we've historically had, but if we start imposing a fee, so if you charge, we'll you probably start a... seeing more yeah. people not come through. So the question is, is that revenue uh, a uh, profit We're center. We're going to be less than surrounding towns. Yeah, it, it, it's a modest fee. They're probably still going to want to come here. It, it, it's a modest fee. You know, yeah. we, we have some substantial expenses as far as our pains, as far as our RNG tipping. And by no means does this fee even come close to those expenses. But, you know, it's a way of saying, hey, you know, we've got some expenses here that we have to cover. Yes, you know, you have your permit and everything like that. But, they are substantial, and this is just our way of even being competitive with, not competitive, wrong word, just being comparable with other towns. It's right. a way no, for I, people who are using the bulky waste to actually be the ones paying for it instead of all the residents paying. Is it a net, net I, pay? I mean, it's going to actually pay for it, or is it? I, um, when you calculate what, it. Is it going to cover all our costs for the bulky waste? Um, I don't believe so. Okay. I mean, some of it's homeowners dump, so you're going to get some excess, right? This is just right. normal. Yeah. But I yeah. think the, the the bulk of it <laughs> should be paying for itself. Yeah, you know and what I mean? building materials. Still yeah, I mean, if you're a builder or yeah. whatever, kind of what you dump yeah. stuff, you should be paying for it. Yeah, my, my bigger concern is are we going to see that revenue come to fruition? Or are we going to see a lower revenue stream that's anticipated because we're going to have fewer people coming through the lines to... I don't believe that'll be the case. I, I, I think that I think in all in all, it's going to help us, um, you know, as far as the RCC, as far as, you know, recognizing that we have to keep our costs in check and that everyone needs to help out. OK, um, and we won't need to staff order anything else to collect the fees. We'll have enough. Yeah, we should have enough staff. Nate. Yeah. Yeah, we got that covered. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all for it. Yeah, um, I, I am too. Okay. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure. Oh no, no, no. Good questions. I'd like yeah. to close down the dump <laughs> for two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. It just seems like we're already saving so much money Are now you, with yeah. our recy new recycling. Maybe bin. you can highlight that for us when we get. To yeah, the we will. So we know. I yeah. just wanted solid numbers from Ed, and yeah. we'll bring it next meeting. Okay. Yeah, we're always looking at ways to improve the RCC. Um, Ed's out there. We're looking at our equipment. We're looking at our hauling rates. We had pains in here last year for a discussion just to better understand what our expenses are. Um, you know, and I like the way we're excited. All right. I know I personally have a trouble with the ARPA positions because I know as those were happening, members of this board, I don't know if any of them are still here, but definitely raised questions like all the guidance about ARPA fund was don't use it for staff because you can't, you know, you're, you're creating a clip, so. Um, the employees are very aware of yeah. that too. They knew it was, it's actually sooner than we thought it would be. We thought we had another year with yes. it, yeah. but because of the be ARPA rules, they yeah. can't make you start the mm -hmm. are shorter, right? All right, so what yeah. I've got to do, so Jay gave us 8.7, 6.7, and 4.7, so. Yeah. And I'm going to put in 6.7. Uh, I'm still on 4.75 for the uh, four So I'm going to put in 6.7. For anybody curious, I'm doing the hunt and peck method of. So something like, um, so 6.75, I got it. 
and a 31.2 mil rate gets us to the 10% balance. 31.2 mil rate is um, 14%. Averages okay. Now that we keep general government at 6.7, I'm going to go to 32.2, and over on the tax thing, it's 18. I guess I should probably have some decimal signs. The other one was 14.4. Got them all. Can you? Hmm? You got them all. I'm kind of, can you do 4.7 with the 789? The 4.7 for Board of Selectmen? Uh, yeah, I'm going to get there. I'm doing 6.7 on all three of the Board of Eds first. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. So this is 6.7 with 10.42. There's no rate for that. Wait, that was 6.7 with 10.40. Wait a second. So that's a 33 mil rate. And that's 21%. What was the mill rate on that one? 33. So that's the 6.7, the 10.42, that's 33. And that was 20. I'll copy it off. And that's 21% tax increase. And I'll put all these um, in the coming, it may not be tomorrow, but. Within a couple of days, I'll get these out. Maybe I should go on. Okay. Four
All right, so this is 4.7 for general government with each of the three scenarios. Um, with 4.7 Board of Ed, it's 31, and it's 13.67 tax. 7.89 Board of Ed is 22, 17.34. And with 10.42 Board of Ed, it's 32.75 or 20.09. Yes. Yep. The last one, the nine plus three. Seven eighty nine, ten forty two. We I mean, obviously yeah. have a million interpolations that are going to back. Yes. Yep. Yeah. There we go. The town's money on Powerball tickets. All right. 4.75 APEX. Thanks for your patience, everybody. And again, thank you for providing the breakdown of the different scenarios and the impact for those, because that is extremely helpful for this. For the new people too, just to note the general government did give back just under 100,000 last year. Yeah. I can tell you why it's so warm because someone's office is very cold. <laughs> Jay. So we have to turn the heat up. But I don't know why it's. If you open this door, it might come in here in the cold. The heating system. Oh, yeah, I might turn the heat back. It's still warmer now. It's the next capital request. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? All right, 8.7 for general government, 475 board of ed is 15.14%, 79 is 18.8%, 1042 is 21.37. What was that last one, sir? 21.37. So all these scenarios, the low is 13.67, the high is 21.37. All right. We're at the uh, appointed hour here. Is there anything else that, Jay, that you have? I know we asked you a very specific question. You gave us three scenarios. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, not following me, Jeff. Um, I know we asked you a very specific question. You gave us those three scenarios. Then we started doing all this work on here. Yep. Did we cut you off? Is there anything else you wanted to add for us? No, I think that's pretty much it. Would you agree, Ethan? I agree. I think we're good. All right. You know, given where we're at right now. Okay. Thank you. All right. So Other discussion good. about the providing guidance. You want to do the round pass? pass? Yeah. I mean, we can we, Yeah. So, the quick question: Do we think the town would vote to approve just doing even the low number of thirteen point six seven percent taxes? Is that realistic? 
depends on what you're paying attention. It's just an honest question. No, I, it's, I think it's a very honest question. But I think if there, if uh, this is my experience over whatever many years, is if you present the potential cuts mm -hmm. and the potential benefits in a clear and concise way, then you can get stuff passed. But if you don't, if you just throw a number out there and you leave yourself open to blanket criticism where people can just say, vote no to this, and there's nothing backing to respond to that, mm -hmm. or there's no information, it then it's hard to get passed. But the budgets have been passing. I mean, there's a lot of young parents in town now that really want to see a, a good town, and they're willing to pay for it. And I'm just giving a feedback. This, yeah. you do, and, you, and you have a, you're just talking, you know, wholesale yeah. street politics now. You have a lot fewer older folks in town that were the core. I don't know what the demographic actually is. So I, yeah. But even the, the, the group that is the older generation now isn't the hardcore anti-tax crowd that was there. Yeah. That being said, you know, you don't. I don't, it's not the end of the world if a budget goes down. At least you know, you know. You, you, I think it's the job of the board of this. I'm now I'm going to just speak for myself. It's the job of the board of finance to look at all this information in detailed format. That's why I was always a big fan of the town meeting because everybody would get that presentation. When you go to referendum, it's, it's easy to sway a, a crowd, right? When it was town meeting and you went and you sat down, and there was oh, 100 people in the community center to vote for the budget. They would all have to see what we just saw. Mm -hmm. And then they vote yes or no. Yeah. Where, so it's really it's it's a it's a jump ball really. I mean, I agree. It's a high number. And, yeah. and we've talked about the challenge of that being someone can't make it right. Like you got to give everyone a chance to have their say. Right. 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 Uh, I I just fear that there's going to be people that just simply cannot afford a, a large increase. I, I think we could present all the arguments. And say this is the consequences. That's one of the things, things I really want to look at. I don't think at, people you know. have the necessarily the I mean, I within their budget to right. I mean, but we're not there yet. I mean, we're what we're yeah. here tonight is saying come back with these numbers. Um, I don't think any of us have a crystal ball to say would a thirteen pass or would a twenty one pass or would we? Wait? I just I sort of agree with you, Mike. I think. People are going to be balanced. They're going to hear, well, what does my 13 get me or what does my 16 get me? And they'll make their own decision. But I think we have a ways to go before we're voting on a budget that goes to the town. We're going to, we're going to, we, we now sort of know what we're going to hear in March. Right. The public's going to hear, you know, public tends to start to attend in, in big numbers in March. So the public will hear that. We'll hear some feedback and we'll kind of refine our approach. Um, and so I, yeah, I, I guess what I'd like to do is maybe just go around the table. Everybody kind of give some thought as to you know what they're thinking, and then after everybody speaks, we'll I'll look for a motion for a pair of um, percentages to ask the boards to come back with. I think I'll preface by saying I know in in past years, and I and I know perception is this way. Whatever number we give you tends to feel like a floor. People will come back and hold us to it, but I just say in this in this year, I don't know if it's a floor. I mean, I, I think it is, but you don't know until we get more in there, so. But with that, I mean, why don't we start a new time? I'll go, I'll go last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this time. Don't start. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I, I, went, I went first last year. Come on, yeah. Okay. Did you? Yeah, no, 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 I'll, no, I'll go. No, I will. Um, I tend to think that going lower, you know, we talked about seeing those cuts and seeing what everything is going to do. I think by going lower in guidance initially gets all the facts out onto the table. So did you want my numbers now or do you want me to just make a comment and then we'll start making motions? I think it's good. It's nice to hear what people are kind of at, just yeah. so you, you know. Yeah. Right. So I'd go a little bit on the lower end for probably both without making a motion. You're not committed to this yet. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So probably I'm somewhere in the fours for both right now. Actually, no, we'll do the, I'm going to switch that up a little bit. 
three, around three for board of ed, and then around six for board of, I mean, sorry, I'm getting all my numbers mixed up. Six, five for board of ed, and then three for board of selectmen, general government. Oh, I thought we were going to go in order. <laughs> no, I, 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 you might have gone all of them? was ready. Okay. Well, I mean, he thought he was next. No, I, my big concern <laughs> is you're right, Mike. We can put forward a budget, we can put forward a number. And if it gets voted down, it gets voted down. But, like, I, I see that as a Copy. exercise of futility. Yeah, like, we should be putting forward a budget that I think will pass. Like, that should be our goal right out of the bat. Um, and I'm concerned we had massive increase last year, historically speaking, and we're talking about more than doubling that this year. Like there were signs all around town last November, 6% is financially irresponsible. Cannot have that when we're talking about doubling that. So I think uh, if you're looking at a combined 20% tax increase over two years is not going to pass in my opinion. I think we got to go low. We hear what the consequences are of that. We already have a good sense of them, but this will allow the general public to have their say. Because even going low, it's still going to be a high increase. So with that, I'm at three and a half for board of head. And 3% of general government. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I forgot what I was going to say. No, I'm just I have a, uh, I, I agree with you. I mean, I've, I've always looked at it more like it's our job to look at what the real needs are and present a budget that's somewhere in the range of providing those services. And if the town doesn't want that, if they don't want to continue to have what they have, they can vote it down. Whereas, from a financial standpoint, it's our job to provide those funds, provide a, a blueprint to, to continue the town the way it is. And if they if they are feel they can't afford it or they don't want to support it, they can oppose it. And that's kind of always it. And you know, I've always come in very high at times because back in the day, there was people putting forward zero percent increase in you know, proposals. I thought that was just I thought that was an exercise in futility for the boards. You know, you knew you weren't going to end up there. Although some, there were some years we were pretty low. So I'm, uh, I'm still in the, of the mind that you set the bar low, just to keep those creative juices flowing until you can kind of really crunch what's going on. But I don't, I don't like the idea of being irrational. And there's, there's no way, there's no. The, the, I, I think if you if you went with the the low numbers here for the board of ed. It might be the first budget you see voted down because it's too low, uh, just because of the number of cuts. And you start cutting teachers. I mean, that's what people are, always get up in arms about. We had a a meeting a couple of years ago. The room was packed because board of they needed a little more money to hire another teacher at the third grade. That was probably the most emotional meeting I've ever attended. That was just for one more teacher. So you start talking about cuts like this. I think if this got out and what the potential would be if it doesn't pass. You might be able to pass, what you, and I'm not, I don't like it. I mean, I, I'm, I really want to sit down and crunch these numbers and make sure we're working with, you know, a, an, an accurate reflection of the town. I kind of trust it, but I still, something just doesn't, when you see numbers like 19% to get those increases, but then we're getting large numbers from them for increases, you know? Uh, anyway, I need to, I need to hash this out. I'd be, I'd be happy to go with the five and three for now. Yeah. Five for board of that, three for general yeah. government? Yeah. Um, I like your thinking for sure, and and I think for certain things, right? I I would say especially on the education side, I don't know that. The only thing is, is like staying the same sometimes isn't always good. I think that's one thing I'd like to see excel and continue to to grow. I mean, we've got a banner on the high school. What it was uh, voted three. What? But that was what. 16, 17? So, like so I would like to see that every year, not just, you know, one year. Um, do I want to pay high taxes? Absolutely not. 
but I want to make sure that my kids are getting the best education that they can in a school that provides everything that any kid could ever need. And, you know, I could definitely move to another state that has lower, lower taxes. I have, I'm not going to name them, but I have friends that live there and, you know, yes, their taxes are extremely low, but, um, you know, this specific family has a, a kid with a challenge and it's impossible to get him help because the schools just don't have the means to provide any assistance at all. So it's like pulling teeth because the schools have no money. Um, yes, I think you have to be realistic, but I think we have to be realistic in that, I mean, it costs money to provide our kids education. Um, and I could totally probably go with the three for the general government, but I'd like to see, I'd probably say like six or seven on the board of ed side. You guys realize we have to cut staff too, right? If our budget stays this low. Okay, just so everyone knows that. And where are your bones? So my biggest concerns are kind of two. One is we're gonna have so much issue educating the public on what's going on because house values have not increased this much. This is unheard of and what, what people who don't understand how this works are saying right now is, oh my goodness, my house has gone up by 30% in value, my taxes are going up 30%. What they don't realize is there's gonna be a reset of the mill rate. So level setting that is gonna be the first step. And I, you know, I really think that a lot of people are gonna have trouble just wrapping their head around that, let alone how much the budgets are gonna increase. So that's my first thought is, let's keep it as simple as possible. Um, when I think about education and when I think about the general government, first, general government, I think that we're subsidizing a lot of things that we shouldn't be. So when we talk about the ARPA funds and Parks and Rec, and when we talk about the bulk disposal in, uh, in the RCC, the people who are using those services should be bearing the brunt of those services. So. Parks and Rec should be self-sustaining. I have my kids in a lot of activities. I would rather pay more for those activities than see property taxes for everyone else go up just a hair more and spread that, spread that around. I use the bulk disposal a lot, but I would rather see us charge for that because I also see a lot of contractors doing that stuff. So without understanding what those impacts would be to getting people to pay for the services they're using and us supplying as a town the minimum viable services that we need to to be a fiscally responsible town i'm apt to want to understand what's causing a 10 percent, 10.4 percent increase in budget for school so is this all just general or are we adding services that we should have are we losing funding I, I would like to see a three to three and a half percent general fund, uh, general uh, expense and like a 6% for for a board of ed. That's kind of where my mind goes because I know the board of ed is a lot less ability to give and take from, from charging for additional services rendered. They can't, you're right. Yeah, yeah. that's a good, very good point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 31. <laughs> <laughs> so what were the changes last year? I'm curious. Of the model engine, maybe know this. But the increases? Yeah. yeah. Oh, here we are. It's on, you, it, yeah, it's on the model. Should be yeah. on the prior year. Um, they were like right around yeah. four. Somebody was 3.98. 3.98 and four. Yeah. Um, Missy pointed out earlier that over five years, the average increase was about 2.3%, something like that, which that's in the model. There's some hidden got him. Yeah, we, we did it. There. there was an analysis done last year where I think it was for going back to like 2001, the average tax increase has been 2%. And then you were asking more for the budgets than the tax. Yeah, more out of curiosity, you know, what yeah. each of the budgets went up. 3.98 for general government and four for board of ed. Yeah. Okay. And Thank that's you. what got us to that 6% tax increase, yeah. which is the highest we've seen in those 25 years. I mean, it's, 
there are so many moving pieces that we just went through tonight that it's <laughs> a little hard to even wrap my head around. Um, I would like to see, you know, all of those pieces and how they, they come out. Um, you know, and thinking about the budgets that certainly what I do at the office is significantly different than this. Conversely, what we're looking at for increases with staff and things like that is, um, is higher than some of what these percentages are showing, at least for general government. I mean, the Board of Ed, I mean, I, I can certainly see the 5% um, general government. I mean, I could see 4%. I think that, um, you know, that are, I, I, I recognize the fact that, you know, that's whatever percent tax increase. Uh, conversely, I would like to see what that works out to be. So a couple things. One, um, we did a lot of math on the fly here. And my experience, especially when it's me driving, is <laughs> I want to be sure that it's really 13 and it's really 20 and it's you know really all those numbers. Um, one of the things I did in the background here was just set budgets to the same as they were this year. So the only variable right now is the is the grand list and it's it's like a twenty nine point two mil rate just to just if it was no change. So no inflation. Yeah. So just to have that in the back of your mind in terms of you know, so if any of these numbers seem big, well you know what, thirty one mil rates only two percent more than that. And, so I do want to um, do a little bit of homework and make sure these numbers that we read off that are all between 13 and 20 are in fact correct. Um, so I, would it be too much to ask when you do that to baseline that and say, based on this, this is what the property tax increase, if we kept the budget the same, would be because there is going to be a, a property tax increase just for the fact that we're losing on the vehicle listed commercial properties. So I think that having that baseline and saying, keeping our taxes flat this is what the property tax increase is going to be on average. Oh yeah, yeah. I can put that, I can play that back into the model. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to do that now. Um, that's our that's our again subject to really looking at it. But that's like it's like seven percent just to show we're already baselined at a seven percent so, increase. Right. So and again, let you know. I want to sharpen the pencil on that. Maybe it's more like seven point five or six point eight or something. Like that. Good point, Jeff. Um, you know, I guess I think we have to, you know, I think the, we need the public to help us balance this. It's, it's a tough spot. I think, it, you know, with some of these that are four and four, it's, it's, it's probably not going to, it's going to be tough. I guess I would be, I would probably be looking at a five on the Board of Ed and, and probably the 4.7 on the general government. I think. for going and uh, you know be counting on feedback that happens uh, yeah could you kindly repeat those percentages uh five board of ed 4.7 general government 4.7 general yes. government thank you that, that's jeff's opinion that's right no, i understand okay all right i understand okay so uh, um <clears throat> tell us good vibe yeah. though looked like you were very enthusiastic yeah, yeah. for a second there <laughs> Like, so the numbers on the way they average out, I put in like what everybody was saying as we went. So it's 5.14 Board of Ed and 3.45 um, general government. I don't, you know, I mean, I don't know that we're that precise, but what was your two, two numbers? I'm sorry, this is first one. 5.14 and 3.45. So if you average everybody, maybe five and a quarter, three and a half, something like that. That's what our average was, uh, but we really need to move it. I'd make that motion. 
Okay. I have a motion for the guidance to be five and a quarter, five and a quarter for the Board of Ed and three and a half for the general governor. Third second. second. All right. Discussion on that? Can we find out what that would be for an average staff increase? I will do that. Again, subject to the looking at this with a finer yep. tooth on. Yep. Um, While you're doing that, I just want to, since we're in discussion, I assume. Yeah. Uh, yes. I just want to say that I have serious concerns about the Board of Ed budget. I think, and I'm not that I don't have concerns about the Board of Selectmen, but I have some questions I need answered there more clearly to see where that money's going. The Board of Ed, when you start talking about multiple teacher losses, that's, you know, my son went through the school. That's devastating to the, you know, I mean, you can argue all day long whether or not you can run with bigger classes, but I can tell you just from my experience, when the classes are bigger, the education goes down dramatically, especially at the lower levels. So that's where, you know, you kind of the rubber meets the road. And that's a decision you can present to the town. Is that really what you want? And I think if, you, if you're going to see a strong turnout at a referendum, once again, we're reading tea leaves, which makes Jeff crazy. He's right. Nobody knows. No. Something could happen. The day before the, or a week before the, that could change the whole scenario. You know? So, so that's um, a thirty-one point one mill rate with a fourteen point zero percent tax increase. Again, so subject to the, yeah. and, you know, the mill rate was what? Sorry, thirty-one point thirty-one one. Yes. And looking at the surrounding towns, we're still competitive. We're more, we're, we're a better deal, and I think that's one of the things that people. But you got to maintain that school system if you're going to, if people are, they, you could have the lowest mill rate in the town if your schools aren't rated well, you know? To me, it's just a simple matter of could people afford it, right? Yeah. Like, I, I don't yeah. know how many people have the bandwidth to absorb a 14% increase on their tax. Right. Right. Yeah. I think that's why, it, again, it helps going a little bit lower to start off with guidance here, because then how helpful is this scenario tonight? That's what I want from general government, too. Let's see this low scenario from them too, and then you know maybe we have a couple oh shit moments like we did with looking you know at budget teacher budget cuts. You know, I think that probably jarred everyone on the board tonight. Maybe we get the same kind of reaction if we see that from from general government, and I think it just starts with a lower guidance right now. I think the motion I made was pretty close to what mm -hmm. you yeah. know, it, but but not to belabor the point, but I really don't see either of these coming in a lot lower. You know, I mean, you, 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 I think if anything, there's got to be some, we need to see what that looks like. Based on what we just were presented from both sides, those are lower than what they want and lower than what they need, so, you know, by their own calculations. So it, it forces, I really, I just don't see it coming in lower than that and maintaining the system that we have, or systems, so you I, know? I may be misremembering, but the 6% increase we had last year that didn't significantly pass. That was relatively close. By a margin, it was one of the higher. They don't. They never pass. It's never an over. I don't remember the numbers. Maybe you would, but so, I know looking at the numbers, they've been going up. So they've been passing. They used to pass by ten votes. The there margins. Was, yeah, I mean, literally ten votes. Then it slowly we've gotten up to where it's like an eighty, a hundred, and I'm, now I'm guessing. But, no, I, I just yeah. I think. I mean, we're, I guess we're not there yet. I mean, to, right. to me, we're at a place where we're saying, give us some numbers. Show us what yep. it looks like. We'll get the public discourse. You know, I, I'm going to vote for something tonight that I have no idea that I would actually vote for it in two months, right? It's going to be like to get the data in. Right. I agree. Um, yeah. And maybe I'll see that and say, I would, you know, I, I would only go up from there, or only go down from there, and depend, you know, but so I, I think it's okay to have. Um, to have those uncertainties now. It's February and we've got three meetings before we're really putting something that's going to be close to it. We haven't seen a lot of flesh from the board of selectmen yet anyway. I mean, we've got a bigger picture. Yeah. We don't have the line items yet. You know, that's going to be critical, you know. There's a motion. Was there a second? Yeah. What other discussion do we have? What was that motion? Five and a quarter, three and a quarter? Three and a half. Three and a half. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Say no. Aye. 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 So motion carries 4-2. All right. Let's 
silence. <laughs> the drama in this place sometimes. <laughs> all right, all right. The next thing is um, <clears throat> provide guidance for elected, elected official salary. That's the first select woman in the next one. Um, Jeff, you wouldn't be able to participate in the registrar discussion, I think. Yep. Where I was last year. And Jeff's wife is a new Democratic a new registrar. New registrar. So. Um, so what I passed out in the um, information so, was... Quick question. Does Jeff need to leave the room? I don't remember. No, no okay. I turned it on on the... Uh, oh, that's true, yeah. This not unless sense. he starts giving like that's nasty no, books. Jack Stewart left the room. I did I leave the room. Okay, that's why I'm um, confused. All right. But he was a voting I, member. Was that the difference? Yeah. Okay. So Sorry. Jeff... I know that's that's no, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Jeff, don't scream over. Yeah. So he won't be able to comment. Yeah. Okay, so what you have here is the minutes from last February 7th. Because that was the only record I could find of what we did with the. Um, I was wondering why you said that. I thought it was a typo. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's in there. Yeah. Um, okay. And also, it has what we did for the first select woman. Although I also included the grid. We had talked about a grid. It was never published anywhere. But that grid. Um, I thought that was something we had in. in that was something we used. Yeah, yeah, we, we used to okay, right. it, but I wanted everybody to have it. Okay. Yeah. Can they just see the right Yeah. So the grid starts at. There you go. Yeah. No, go ahead. I'll look. I, no, I, I just wanted to see. It starts at seventy-four thousand. Right. So it starts at seventy-four, and it has a two thousand um, dollar um, bump for each term. Right. So the second term is seventy-six. Third term seventy-eight. Blah blah blah. And seventh and subsequent terms is eighty-six. So that's the grid we had last year. The um, minutes for the registrar, the, um, you may recall, and Oliver reminded me of this, a couple of years ago, there was a stipend for registrars, there was a stipend, and then there was situations where an hourly rate crept in, we changed that to an hourly rate. Um, and then last year, that hourly rate was raised um, from twenty-two fifty to twenty-four dollars, um, and I believe from twenty-five to thirty if the if the person was um, fully certified according to the state of Connecticut. So they they sit now at twenty-four per hour and thirty per hour. Um, so, yeah, just, just, just a little bit more question about that: Who sets the assistant registrar and the moderator and all those? Does that based on their budget? Yeah, um, the registrar talks with Jay and I about um, just increases in yeah. salary, basically to match minimum wage. Yeah, They're yeah. Not yeah. historically it's been chasing yeah. minimum wage. Well, there's a reason I asked, because this year we have early voting, and I've, I've bitten a lot of like uh, concern uh, from folks that they're not gonna have enough staff. It's all in our budget. You, you, uh, for the early voting. What, what's the question, please? The early voting, the registrar's budget. Oh, yeah, it's all in. It's all in there. So they have sufficient money yeah. to pay for all of those people. Yes. yes. So do they have the people? Well, that's, that's, my I'm point sorry. is, if, if the their, the amount you're offering to pay the people might depend upon how many people you get to do it. Well, that's based on the amount of people we're required to have, I think, right? Correct. Yeah, but so they will have to find. The board of selectmen? The, the pay registrar. is set by... Um, I, I had a budget review with the registrar yeah. probably a week and a half ago. We went yeah. through all the expenses, and I don't think I have. We have to vote on on the on deputies or not the deputies, no. but the staff. We don't. No, board select them. Who, who decides how much they make? The registrar with their budget. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, along the lines you're thinking, yeah. like, I don't know if the state has provided formal guidance on exactly what early voting looks like yet. I, I was actually on a Zoom call oh, last okay. night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was Excellent. a two-hour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, can, I, I, okay. I think yeah. I have a Good. link I can send you if you want to know. Yeah. yeah. But, okay. Anyway. So why don't we? Um, so why don't we take the registrar first? Yeah, we'll take the slide. Just a quick bit of background, because you mentioned, you know. Natalie and myself are part of a subcommittee 
Uh, okay, yeah, two years ago, we did a deep dive. We compared other towns. We did the average. We're also reason, as Jeff pointed out, we put forward a proposal that changed it from compensating for hourly for some things, salary for some things, and a stipend for events, and simplified it to a per mm -hmm. hourly basis. Felt it was more fair compensation. But at the time, we also did compare to other towns to try and get it to what we thought was a fair mm -hmm. price, right? Or fair hour, hourly wage. And then last year, it went up, after all that analysis, just went up a, a large percentage. And there wasn't really any research done. It was just kind of mm -hmm. increased. So it was based, because, yeah, based, the conversation that I remember was it's, very, it's getting very difficult to get people to do it. Yeah. So if you can't. <laughs> You have to have a registrar. You can't not. And the other thing is, they don't, if you really look at what they make, it's not a lot. In, in terms of the overall impact on our budget, yep. it's a small amount. And you do want, trust me, you want quality people doing it. That's not something you want to be on the news about. But uh, anyway, I mean, I I think we got it up pretty well. I, I don't think you ever want to go without giving another increase. Just because you, you know, it's, it's almost like, that's the only review you ever hear about was I went in for my review and I got no raise. That's just like a slap in the face. The other thing I'll add, we lost the registrar this year. And I'm not saying it was because of early voting, because I think there were other things going on. But there, the, the, the requirements, just on the Zoom call I was in last night, they have had a large number of registrars resign this year because of the early voting. So you got to keep that in the back of your head, too. So. No, I, I, I agree. Yeah. I think I've worked most of the last couple of elections. So you know, so yeah. I see yeah. it. Yeah. Here it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's an un unbelievably tough job. Yeah. yeah. This year's forecast for registrars, we're, we're trending under budget from a four year forecast perspective. And when I look at uh, year over year, uh, 25 versus 24, we've got about a 3K increase in registrars to, to cover some of the, you know, we've got the cost of early voting in there, Canvas reports, there's a few other things. Do so you have their total wages, sir, for the registrar? I'm sorry? Do you have the total wages for the registrar so we could? Not with me, no. Because I think if you wrap a number around it, if you, even if they're going to have more hours this year, but at the same time, the increases are like a couple thousand bucks. It, it is also Please. tough to, to plan for from a simple standpoint of if this, for example, if this budget doesn't pass, then they have a whole other day, but they didn't have to work. And yep. so it, there's some variability to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, always, yeah. Sorry, Jay, I didn't mean to oh, cut you off. Problem. I'll, I'll I think you're a pretty good job. Have, but... I said that when Michelle, we looked at, you know, their budget pretty carefully. Oh, good. Is there an average increases of union contracts? Like what, you know, if you look at the various union contracts, what? Is there a ballpark average of what they're getting? Percentage-wise? Percentage-wise, yeah. like, if, you know. Yeah, two and a, the placeholder was 2.5%. Two and a half. Percent. Two and a half. Um, that's what both of our union contracts were, so. That's just the placeholder. Yeah. Yeah, in our workbooks. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to go into this year without giving them some yeah. accommodation. We've had inflation, right? Yeah. Yep. The last two years, that's 9% or whatever it's been. Was it last year? 6%, 7%, I think it was. And then this year, it's 3%. I'm going back two years. So we gave them a raise last year. I, I'd be, I, if we gave them a dollar an hour more, I'd be thrilled. Yeah. So if you guys are inclined to entertain that so I can make a motion if you want to see what happens well my I mean I have some experience yeah <laughs> which, what do you, what do you I mean I agree with a lot of what you said it, it's a tough job I think we're going to see the first early voting is going to be the presidential primary in April so um, unfortunately it'll be kind of late to influence uh, budget cycle but um, there is a lot of moving parts with that uh, um, uh, voting, that early voting. Like it's for 14 days, they gotta work Saturdays and Sundays in there. They gotta work the holidays if they happen. Same thing will happen in November. So I I think we want- In, to, in think, August, right? Yeah. yeah. 
So, you know, pretty much anybody who's got a full-time job, they might have used to been able to take it four hours a week off. That They're out of the running for being a registrar anymore. So I, I just think we want to make sure we're paying them. Do they get overtime? Oh, do they, they get a flat, they, no, they get a flat rate. So they, but is it? Do they, they must get overtime. They go over 40 hours, right? No, not, well, not every, they get they so. get paid per hour, right? It's they just, get paid per hour. It doesn't, it doesn't increase. But if you, I mean, is it legal to give somebody over? I mean, regardless of what they're doing, I think there's. They might have a case. <laughs> just well, I guess I was thinking I could maybe do a dollar. I was thinking like three and a half. I know every year if if three and when, when, when my yeah. when my job looks at me, I put in a ton of work, and if I'm getting something under four, you're looking. I kind of get a little irritated because. Um, I mean, everything always goes up. I mean, yes, yes, I, you know, I'm not, on, you know, in on always ra raising money, but I think money should go to places where it's well deserved. Yeah. And Our town hall employees are only getting two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, but there, want to, stay to fair. be fair, their their job description hasn't changed dramatically in the last right. year. This is a totally different job. Kelly, Kelly says. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, uh, we can't give you a raise, Kelly. So. I would, I would totally go. I mean, I could do the three point three three the dollar, if you want to stick to a. I mean, it's it's not. Like, there's no way it's going to be that much money, yeah. in the grand scheme of things. Well, yeah, normally, you know, especially I'm, with I'm, no overtime, that's kind of. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, normally I'm hesitant from a standpoint of like, if you just add a little here, a little there, yeah, it adds yeah, up yeah. over time. But you, you guys make some very valid points but this is unprecedented it's going to be challenging it, it, and you got to work with them so <laughs> but there's, so, but there's no way you, you, so. you assume i'm going to volunteer yeah, again, you, have, you have to work on sundays right so you don't get time and a half for fundays no. but right. no but time I and a half it's 40 hours this shows anything, the real you know. problem though right yeah but, there's no way yeah. that that you can costs are going to go up every single year they have to that's just the nature of the game there isn't one year you look back and go oh everything was cheaper or everything's cheaper this year than it was last year covid was the a little fire different budgets are so high but this shows the real problem like we need to bring business in east grandy to offset costs that is the the major piece like you've got to figure out ways to bring in generate more tax revenue because that's the only way we're going to be able to do thank it thank you I mean, but 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 you can't but you can't just say oh well, well we're going to gut everything in an interim because then what's left of the town? I mean, it's less attractive for development. And then you're never going to get it. I mean, should we have a motion for a so bar? I'll make the motion for a dollar an hour on each on each step, so you go to twenty four whatever whatever twenty five and thirty one. Yeah, but I do have a question before I make my motion. What would you say, Jeff? You're, what what do you? What would I say? Your, your wife was a registrar. What would you? You could speak for the other job. <laughs> right. Because he can't. Well, I, I mean, um, I would like to see it go up more than that, to be honest with you. I think it's a, it's one of those jobs that reports to the state that is, you know, is somewhat independent. Um, so I think. Um, what were you thinking? I when I was married to the registrar? No. <laughs> I don't Somebody know. second? He hasn't, he hasn't no, formally made motion. his motion yet. Oh, okay. I would draw any motion. See, I think, I guess, I think we need to be careful. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying these folks aren't deserving of a raise. But other folks in town are, too. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure that we, we balance things appropriately. Yeah. So a lot of hardworking people in this town. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We, yes, and... and Again, this isn't me saying that these folks aren't deserving, but yeah. we've got a whole town to look at here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. And I've been here exactly one year, and I've I've been around all the departments. I've met the people. They're hard work. They're good people here. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So let's just keep that in mind. That's all. That's all I'm saying. So I I would go probably I would propose like plus two instead of plus one. That's probably what I would go. Nothing paid, Nancy, but make your motion. I'll make a motion to increase the steps by a dollar fifty <laughs> per, okay. per tier. Is there a second? So that would be twenty five fifty and thirty one fifty. So what if you did five percent? 
instead of a dollar fifty, wow. you just do five percent because it looks better. because well because if you're going to give, it's going to be a bigger percent on the lower end um, than it is on the higher end, right? So if you just did five percent, that would be saying, right? that would be your dollar fifty, and then you would then equally do the lower end. It would just wouldn't be it wouldn't be the same amount, right? Because I got your point. Yeah, yeah. I withdraw my motion, but then it's going to be a whatever. It's going to be a weird number. It's going to be uh, like twenty three seventy two, whatever it ends up. We have to set the number. We have to set the number. Yeah. So, so okay. it would be twenty five. So it would be twenty five twenty and thirty one fifty. If you use five yeah. percent. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I make that motion. All right. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? Twenty-five, twenty, and thirty-one, fifty. Baseball. What's that? It's about five percent increase. It's give or take. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Attention. All right. All right. Port Selectman's woman salary. Um, we. It's been practice in the past again, just for folks that are new, that. Um, we typically advance the grid most years. The idea being that if we don't, it becomes out of date with um, being able to attract a new select person to the, to the position. So it doesn't mean we have to do it. I'm just pointing out that it's been done in many past years. And, and by that, I mean this grid that I sent you, you know, all of those numbers would go up by some, right? And then um, we would look at the salary, you know, and then, and then the second term salary would be what we'd be setting the um, first select line. I think t recently we've done, we've, you know, moved everything up by 2,000. I just throw that out there. I, but I welcome discussion and people hand in motion of some sort. So just for a frame of reference, You've just begun your second term, so you're now at the second level. Based on our steps, it'd be yeah, seventy-six thousand. Yeah. Yes, it starts at seventy-four. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you got to split that into two years because they don't get the raise for two years. Mm -hmm. So it's going up so many dollars. Well, it's going up a thousand bucks a year. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would I, think, like, um, presumably. When you got reelected, then your salary went up. No, no, that's July. what we said. Except for the fiscal year. Except yeah. for the fiscal year. Okay, so we go up in July. I mean, I would be okay with following the same five percent. I mean, it's not that. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day. It's what I think it's like an extra like eighteen hundred bucks or something. So I'm, I'm a little hesitant for that, and I think it's a very different situation with the registrars, whose work has completely changed, right? With early voting, you know, Eden's responsibilities are huge, and the pay is never going to be appropriate to what they are, but they haven't changed dramatically year over year in the way the registrars were. And that was one of the reasons I agreed with a larger increase for the registrars because of the change in responsibility. My two cents. I, the only thing I would add to that is, and not, this is not a criticism of anybody, it's just an observation, okay? I, I don't think you want to change the grid. I think you want to right. stick with the grid because I think that was put in place to encourage Mm -hmm. Frankly, I'm sure Eden's doing a better job now than what she was two years ago. She knows a lot more. Yeah. So that's what you're buying, regardless of the person. Yeah. It would take a really unique situation for the person's skill set to get worse in two years. You know. That being said, we've also hired two new people. We've hired a finance director, yeah. and we've hired a uh, fire department administrator. So that's additional staff costs which were done by one person previously, you could argue, you know, very well that there's a there's a direct benefit to that. That the gate saved tons of money. The, right. Well, that's, that's not, not the right millions of dollars of grants. But I mean, just from a, strictly from a uh, yeah. staffing standpoint, 
you know, I you know, there's a lot of situations where you, you know, I've been a big proponent of putting some money aside for a bond writer and sharing it with the board of and just a dedicated and then you can calculate what they the additional uh, additional grant writer. Well, that's uh, a lot of what Jay is doing. Well, so, yeah, my, that's up to my point. But you could, you know, so that, those are the types of things. Those are, I, I always see those. So, like I said, I'm not going to get into the, the weeds on whether or not the benefit was there or or not. But, you know, we have a fixed grid. And I think that's very well advertised when people run. They know what they're going to make. I don't think they're aware of the grid. I don't, I don't think the steps are explained to you when you're starting doing it. Did you find out about that at your first meeting? <laughs> yeah, well, from Jim told me, yeah. Oh, okay, so yeah. Jim told you. But my point is, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an elected position. You know what I mean? You're, you're running for it, and there's a set job that you have. And to, to, you know, not to, to, to further that argument, I would argue that we're getting to the point where if you take the administrator, Jay, and Eden, and combine those salaries, you're getting real close to a professional town manager. That's a conversation we had 15 years ago. I think that's a conversation as a town, and as a, you know, that's up to the board of selectmen. That's not a board of finance. But from an overall perspective, you're up in 100, and whatever, 135, whatever thousand dollar range. You could hire somebody mm -hmm. who has a, a master's degree in public. You know what I mean? And you can fire them if you don't like. Them, you know, so that's what they do in Granby. That's what you know. It, it's a mix around the area. I, from what I've seen. The towns that do that, it's a much more stable governance, you know? So that's a whole other discussion. But anyway, so I guess I'd, I'd be in favor of just sticking with the grid. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, you bring up a lot of interesting points, Mike, but I yeah. wasn't sure yeah. Yeah, yeah, where yeah, you yeah, were going to bring done. it. I'm done. <laughs> Can I just voice one thing? Yeah. yeah. So we had mentioned cost of living, 3%, 4%. My biggest concern is $1,000 a year is less than 2%. That means every year they're making less than they were before. I think it should at least... If we if we increase the the grid from two thousand dollars a year to or two thousand uh, dollars a term to three thousand dollars on those steps going forward, I think that that would be beneficial to. Be a good conversation, yeah. Times. Or you could match inflation. Yeah, if we're if we're able to do that, I wasn't sure if we had to name a dollar amount. We well, do. We, we do have to name a dollar amount. Um, and matching inflation is dangerous because. <laughs> What about those years when inflation is zero, zero point yeah. one or negative? You know, yeah, um, that's true. What what measure do you use? Um, so just for for fun, uh, if you took the grid, so again the the um, the past practice would be that you maybe make, you move the grid up so the seventy six becomes the base salary and you. You know, move everything up, and eighty-eight becomes the new seventh term, right? Yes. Um, that's the past practice. That's roughly about a two and a half percent. You know, in the early years, it's a shade more. Like the first, the first year would be wants to be seventy-seven nine instead of seventy-eight. Last year wants to be eighty-eight one fifty instead of eighty-eight. So it's pretty close to that. That's two and a half every two years, right? Yeah, it is. So that's one and a that's one and a quarter. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If we, okay. Yeah. That's all I was getting at is it, it eventually, You're if we fall. don't reset, it's going to be the equivalent of having a $50,000 a year job. So these, down these, the line. so these are periodically reevaluated. So I think it was three or four years ago, it was Dave McNally, myself, Natalie, and Jim Hayden did an analysis compared to oh, the yeah, and, oh, yeah. and kind of figured out where we should be. And yeah, that's what got us the grid, and number. it's just been tweaked since then. So there will be periodic okay. resets to alleviate, hopefully, that concern, because it is very valid. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if we're at that stage mm -hmm. now. So so doing 5% bumps it to, you know, roughly 4, you know, it's roughly 4,000 each term. I mean, it's, you know, pretty close. So within 100, so. I, I struggle with a 5% increase because, like I said, that's 5% total. Yeah, across so two and a half, three years. Okay. Two and a half that's a year. Yeah. It's different than 5% a year. Okay. I think it's something we should look at. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm happy with the 77 this year. In, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy with a in $2,000 increase because it's immediate, right? July 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think going forward, we really, to his point, I think, or in your point, we should look at the, the scale. 
Yeah. I'm actually well, surprised we don't have, we have a, we've decided to add a periodic review for policy. We should probably have a periodic go to market, see what comparable yeah. salaries are yeah, we're every five yeah. years at the least, right? Yeah. So if, if we just bump the grid by the two and a half percent, the current person would get a would get a four thousand dollar would get would get both of them and then it would sit for two years. Then the next race would be four thousand. Right? Because you you right. you um, move the grid every year. So you'd move it to an annual rather than buy it? No, but every every year we we continue that thing. You know, this year we make seventy six the lowest salary. Next year we make seventy eight. Right. So there's already some sort of baking into that, and because you're moving the grid. Yeah. Okay. Because we're yeah. moving it the other way. I, I knew something wasn't right with it, but like if we never move the grid, if we never then, moved it, we should do five percent. We're doing the same thing. Okay. Yeah. You're right. So it comes out the same. So we can increase it five percent. We can just, and I would round it to seventy eight, eighty, et cetera. So you're just simply proposing we've moved the salary up one year one term. So yeah, my proposal would be, if there was such a motion, envision this grid starting at 76, 78, 80, and then we add an 88 at the bottom. So just shift it down. Yeah. So yeah. the base, so salary, base salary, salary is 76, and then increases by 2,000 yeah. every term. Right. And it's still, we stop at, you know, seven. We, you know, yeah. we'll stop there at 88. And, well, just based on twelve years. I was going to say, even there from the time this was enough to be time. here for fourteen years, we can. Well, from the time this was established to now, yeah, inflation has been 10, yeah. at least ten percent yeah. increase, right? Okay, we're not. We we weren't considering Oops. inflation when we did this. We didn't have that. Do we have it handy what it was last year? Like if it was the registrars, is that part of the same meeting minutes? This is what we did. Yes, we did the. Right. Oh, but it doesn't say what it was from the update change from uh, Oh, yeah. That was older than last year. Was it? This is the grid as it looked at the end of uh, last year's yeah. meeting. Yep. And what we said was, well, we didn't write down. We ne the grid never lived on paper. Mm -hmm. It was always in somebody's head that until I did it. Oh. But we, no, I believe we did. It went from 72 to 75. Okay. It, yeah. it was 72. It was? Okay. Two years. Two years ago. So it's gone up. So, so, and normally you don't vote on the grid. You're just voting to set her salary for this fiscal year. Okay. <laughs> the to keep grid the motion is separate simple. for you guys yes. to work okay. with. But that makes sense. So that clarify. Would make, <laughs> you didn't want so, to write that motion? <laughs> so that motion would be to set it at 78. All right. You see you guys all see that? Well, the motion is to, Okay. That's all we're doing. It's, it's, it's where we, where yeah. Eden is on the grid, if we change the grid, it would be a base salary of seventy-eight thousand. The base salary would be seventy-six, but she's a second, second counter. Term. But right. we have to write the motion as it's we are setting the first select move salary at, at seventy-eight thousand. Okay. Can't talk about the grid in the motion. Right. So is there a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Mention. Okay, that gives. Thank you for going off the grid. <laughs> However, in the background, we're going to we're, we're going to do with that grid what we said. So at least there's an expectation out there that that's how the next. Okay. Um, review and act on capital requests. I have a request. So I received from Eden a request to have a meeting next week to talk about a police department capital request that's not ready for tonight. I'm wondering if we can also do the fire department one at that same meeting. Just back, I'm looking at the right. clock. It's 9:30. Yeah, because it's going to be the same town meeting. So. All right. Fine. So, in all likelihood, there'll be a special meeting. It's going to have to be Zoom too. And it's, okay. Because there's no rooms. There's no room. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be Zoom only. Tuesday night. Yeah. Next Tuesday, do we have? Are there six of us that can be? It'll there? probably Next be Tuesday? less than 15 minutes. Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday at 13th at 7. Yeah, I can do that. What's that for, sorry? Capital request. We're going to have a police department and a fire department capital request. Okay. That's good. Uh, 
13th? No, it's the 13th. Okay. So, okay. so right now on the 13th. Well, I guess it's I better in the yeah, early than the day late. Than so can we ask questions on this now? I guess I'm thinking given the, I mean, we've been, so it's the hour. I know we still have a- Do you want to email me questions or just make it easier? Or oh, go ahead. I mean, go ahead and put them For on. fire department? Well, just kind of in, in general. So the, the, the 40,000 was part of the five-year model as it was. The remaining 20 here, I took a quick look at the model and maybe I was looking at the wrong version. That wasn't part of the model originally. You guys are proposing now an additional 20,000 to cover these items that was not originally forecasted in the model? Uh, my, my recollection was that we went in with 60. We requested 40 at the time. And this is the maintenance for the apparatus, its tires, and its hose, ladder, and pump testing. What was part of the original 60. Yeah. So we're at about $38,000 right now as far as apparatus repairs. So we got $2,000 left. That needs, that needs to take us between now and the end of June. And that's, and, I, and I'm gonna make a statement that that's Ed Hubbard and his team up at EPW doing the repairs on the apparatus, on the police vehicles, all town vehicles, saving this town thousands of dollars. So when I look at something like this, um, do I think it's good spend? Absolutely, I do. Uh, did we have a baseline? No, we didn't have a baseline. Now we do. And this is what we, this is what we're going to be bringing back into town. It, it's this spend. So maybe that's where I was going wrong as I was looking for, you know, a twenty thousand dollar item. So you're saying that it was in the capital plan. And it was in there for sixty thousand. Correct. And that was what we approved. Correct. Okay. And I'll just, that's yep. easy to go back and validate. So it's not. But then at the time, at the time you guys said, "Well, gee, how, how much are you going to need?" Yeah. And at the time we thought it was going to be around forty thousand. Why? Because we didn't have a baseline. We didn't know. A lot of the, a lot of the apparatus that, uh, that had worked on, um, we thought that they were in better mechanical shape than they actually were. So he went through every piece of apparatus and brought them right up to standard. So the that's- Tires is the biggest expense now. Yeah, yeah tires you're looking at probably six to $800 per tire. And we have to start replacing the tires that are worn. Yeah, so that, my concern was simply, if this was a new item after we just kind of really scrutinized the five-year capital plan, did we have to? I remember that conversation too, and I, so, I couldn't remember what the number set was, but yeah. there was a. I remember, well, it doesn't matter. We, there was a back and forth, whatever that number was. Yeah. It was, but I yes, think it that, was. Yeah. the question was, is this enough to cover? Yeah, that's and right. They were like, well, set it where it will be. I think that's yeah. where the 60k. Yeah. And at the time, I thought it, it makes sense, so I, they wouldn't have to come back and ask. Yeah. No, I, given given the the cert and given the <laughs> given all the work that had been done previously, we've you know, no we doubt it would saved, be sufficient. We've okay. saved. Well, the value's not really. Oh, yeah. That was, yeah. yeah. Where do you start? I mean, if, if these if these trucks are going out to a dealer, they're going to get one hundred fifty dollars, you know, in labor costs. You know that, Mike, right? In, An hour. And okay. the fire department is very, yeah. the fire department is very very pleased with the work that Ed and his team are doing, Excellent. and the police are also. They've done a wonderful job up there. It's awesome. Okay. So just from a financial planning standpoint, this is already encapsulated in the model. The other new item that you wanted the meeting specifically for our next Tuesday, was that also already in that's the, the model? Police. No, that's the police, so it would be an early ask. So it wasn't part of the five-year model we approved four months right. ago. Okay. Kind of what I wanted to talk to you about, of okay. course. Yeah. Is, Which is why I didn't wasn't ready for tonight. Okay, because yeah. well, so one of my asks is going to be yeah. for yeah, next meeting yeah. is going to be what is coming out of the model yeah. to cover that. What's right? the offset? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we can't spend yeah. more money that we don't have. So okay. So just to asking, clarify, the forty k was in the. No, bike. we're talking about police now. Police did. Oh, okay. Sorry yeah. about that. It sounded like the fire department was all set, so I was wondering about the police. Yeah. Thanks. So, yes. So yeah, okay. that would be one of my asks. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, 
I don't believe we have any financial reports. Um, is there anything critical from building the We shared the, okay. the big check we're getting. And BOE budget representative, that, did we already cover that sufficiently? If you budget, yeah. yeah. Still working, yeah. Okay. I'll cover it. Good. Um, is there any public comment? Because it looks like we're going to have, we're going to vote to go in a session of most likely. Can I make a comment on public? Yes. <laughs> I don't usually, but I have two points to make. Um, in reference to, and they're kind of opposed, but um, in reference to the town employee salaries, I've been here 15 years, and I don't think we've ever seen an increase over 2.5%. Many years, 2%, some years, 1.5% or 0 We uh, Well, no, we didn't do zero. Jen took zero one year. And when times were difficult, I've been treasurer for over 15 years now, and in all that time, my salary's gone up $4,000. Inflation does not mm -hmm. even come close to that. I love this job. Everyone who works here, almost everybody works, uh, lives in the town. We love this town. We Clearly, nobody does it for the money, but I just want you to keep that in mind that our reasons are um, very low and don't keep up with inflation most years. And then on the second side of it, I'm putting on my senior citizen, senior um, director hat and also social services to just remind you guys that there are a lot of people in town who can't afford park and rec fees, who can't afford um, you know, going to senior functions. We try and subsidize a lot. Um, and I think Alicia probably does too. Um, so I just ask that you guys keep that in mind. Sometimes it's hard if you're living comfortably to remember that not everyone in this town does live comfortably. Mm -hmm. So two separate <laughs> opinions, yeah. Yeah. one as a town employee and one as, um, you know, in, in um, just kind of standing up for our seniors and um, those who utilize our social services. Thanks, Kelly. It's nice to hear. Thank you. She knows more about it than any of us. Yeah. We're lucky to have Kelly. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Well, it's good to hear you express it, you know. Yeah, I, I, and I think as a board, you do have to, you know, again, this is public comment, take into account all those factors, mm -hmm. you know, that you're trying to provide services, but you want to make it affordable. And, um, you know, some people, they do have a voice, but a lot of times people who are marginalized don't always mm -hmm. have the voice um, at town meetings because they might be working two jobs. They might be mm -hmm. uh, not able to come and express their opinion. So, um, or they might not even be able to watch what's going on or have time to read the talk turkey um, because they're working or, you know, so just a. Okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. And I just, I just want to add one more, more thing is just to add on to Kelly's comment, and that is, you know, the, the town has really, really good employees here. You know, I've been here one year, I've got a chance to work with a lot of them, and uh, they're assets of this town. And if they're assets of this town, then all I'm gonna say is just recognize that. When you're looking at your numbers, you're in front of your computers, recognize that they're assets. Okay, that's... Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. I'm ready. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there that. anyone we are inviting? Lisa. No. No. Jay. Jay. So, Jamie. Just Jamie. So be yeah. I guess we would say Jamie. Yeah. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Is somebody gonna text? Yeah. What time I, you're at?